important program where we build up in the off season and then even in warm-ups before games we'll have specific stretching and strengthening activities they do in addition to throwing that can help prevent injuries once we see injuries for the overhead thrower you know we do a full assessment um often they can get better with physical therapy but there are times where we have to do other more you know invasive injections or potentially even surgery in some situations so that's that's the overhead throw when we, th- when we think about the softball pitcher that's a whole different um degree of injuries different animal to deal with i've i would say most years the key softball pitcher in iowa comes to see me during the season because of some type of issues it's usually not major problems but there are pain tendonitis there's a lot of um potential for overuse with a good softball pitcher because they're used more than a baseball pitcher would be used so we we have a whole assessment we do we try to prevent things on one hand on the other hand it's we deal with a lot of the overuse and tendonitis type issues um with our with our softball pitchers uh, so is it a matter of uh, the number of uh, pitches that they are throwing, you know, either in the preseason, during the season, does you gradually build up with that? Yeah, correct. So it, the baseball overhead pitcher has more stress on their arm than the underhand softball throw, which is, so that's a good thing for softball. So it's not a necessarily a one throw or one day or one weekend problem. For the softball pitcher, it's typically a cumulative thing over several years, one year. What I find is, you know, some of the pitchers who pitch a lot will pitch two games in a weekend, you know, three games a week and do that for a long period of time. So I worry more about the total number of pitches over a longer period of time developing some of these overuse and cumulative injuries. Is it such to do that because every athlete is different in the way they might throw does that come into play in this type of situation yeah a little bit probably not as much as the overhand throw so the baseball pitcher there's a lot more different there are different arm angles foot plants i know that exists with softball too but the the mechanism is not as varied between pitchers so i think the the, the overuse the number of pitches Obviously, there's different types of pitches the softball pitcher will throw that have different forces on the knee or the elbow. Um, but I think it's more of a number of pitch and you know, overuse thing than it is anything else. And does age make a difference in this? Um, no. I, I the, Well, the older pitchers, the older college athletes usually have more miles on their pitching. So that does play a small role. But... I've seen 13, 14 year old youth pitchers who've been overworked or done too much, and they have a lot of arm trouble or some of these issues. So I don't think it's an age thing. I think it's a it's a volume thing over a period of time. Well, even at the age, the younger ages, they should they should really take care of the number of pitches that they're allowing these athletes to throw. Yeah, that's one part of it. The other part that I've seen with softball is. It's not just a spring summer season. They play a full fall season. They go down to Florida or in the south to play winter games or tournaments. And some of the better players, even in Iowa, are playing 10 months of the year. So I think the pitch number is part of it. The other part of it is taking three or four months or more of where you're not playing competitive softball. So I think that it's a really evolved, whether it's a recruiting part or a parent coach part some of these elite teams, I think they just play too much of the season. And talking to some of the college softball coaches, they agree with me that it's kind of evolved into a bigger animal than maybe um, anyone ever thought. Hopefully uh, people are taking that into consideration. So, uh, Dr. Dr. Bolier, what, what would be some of the resources uh, that people can uh, find to help them along, whether it's preventing a, a softball throwing injury uh, or having one and, and what to do with that? Yeah, it's a really good question. So there are, there are lots of resources on the, on the web. Um, the American Academy of Orthopedic Sports Medicine um, and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons both have um, position statements on baseball and softball for recommendations for games and pitches. 
There are recommendations on arm care and building up your arm before the season, during the season. Um, so there's lots of resources that way. We have an amazing Iowa Sports Medicine Institute with physical therapy, primary care sports medicine, orthopedic surgery sports medicine. And we, we kind of cover the gamut of, of dealing with these injuries and guiding athletes through, you know, the next steps. That is Dr. Matt Bolier with the University of Iowa Orthopedic Surgery. He's been the team physician for uh, University of Iowa softball for 13 years. Have an interview with head coach Rick Dillinger coming up. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball from AM800 KXIC. selection of exciting virtual games from favorites like golf, football, and baseball to more unique options like zombie dodgeball. Call 319-337-4058 for details and reservations at Graduate Iowa City Hotel. Hi, Hawkeye fans. My name is Denali. And I'm Briley. And, and we're, we're members of your Iowa Hawkeye softball, softball team. Our team is striving to be number one. And that's why we trust our vehicles to Iowa City Tire and Service, the number one automotive shop in Iowa City. Where service actually comes first. Iowa City Tire and Service, where their customers become friends because they treat you like family. Find them at 410 Kirkwood Avenue or online at ictire.com. Proud sponsors of Hawkeye Softball. Anything can happen when the Cyclones and Hawkeyes come to compete. It's where the rubber meets the road. Neighbors become rivals and friends become foes. Some go home brokenhearted. Others are victorious. When the dust finally settles, one thing stands true. No matter which side you're on, you're part of tradition. For those who are Iowan through and through. We're Iowa Corn, a proud sponsor of the Iowa Corn Cyhawk Series. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. As the country bounces back from COVID and mask mandates are lifted, your business needs a lift too. Promote your company right here, right now. Radio ads connect with 93% of Americans every week. That's more than Google, more than Facebook, more than TV. In fact, radio reaches 20% more millennials than TV. Want more of the people you want to talk to all in one place? Visit iHeartAdvertising.com and get AM and FM working for you. That's iHeartAdvertising.com. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye Softball on 800 KXIC. Ready for the second game of the series between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Ohio State Buckeyes. And assistant coach uh, Rick Dillinger is joining me here today on our, our pregame interview. Uh, coach, and, uh, at this point, an 18-21 and 21 season, would that, would, how would you describe that in your mind uh, going into the season? Would you say that this might be uh, where this team could be for as young as it is? Well, we're young, but, you know, we've had some bumps in a row along the way. We've lost some close games, and, and we've had some learning happening. You know, I, I mean, it's happening with all our staff as far as our pitching staff and our young hitters and, and so forth. So um, is it where we want to be? Of course not. You know, are we going to get better? I sure hope so. I mean, you know, because our kids are, I mean, our kids have a good attitude. They're playing hard. I mean, they're working hard. They're listening. So uh, that's all we can ask right now. Were you concerned about the, losing the three seniors a year ago, three senior pitchers, and then coming in with some younger staff this year and then bringing in uh, Brianna Vasquez? You know, you're always concerned when you lose experience. Uh, but, you know, the, the young kids have uh, stepped up. They're learning as uh, on the go. Uh, uh, you know, you, when you lose uh, a fifth-year senior like uh, Ducey was, an all-regional player that had a phenomenal rice ball, that, you know, that's a big hole to fill. You know, and uh, Lauren, Lauren Shaw, of course, graduated, and, and Sarah also graduated. And so, you know, we lost a, a pretty veteran staff, you know, and then we're replacing with some kids that are much younger, freshmen, haven't, you know, been out there with all the bullets flying, so to speak. So, you know, there's growth there. They're, they're getting better. They work hard. And, you know, I guess that's all you can ask. Talk about Devin Greer then a little bit. I think uh, head coach Renee Gillespie getting more and more confidence in her and giving her more time in the circle. Yeah, De Devin's come a, a long way, especially since the, the start of the year. Uh, uh, she didn't get much fall time uh, because of various issues. But uh, uh, as the season's going on, she's getting better and better, and she's getting a little more confident. And, and she's actually starting to do what I've always thought she could do. So I just think she's going to continue to grow at Iowa and uh, uh, be a very proud member of the Iowa Hawkeye uh, pitching staff in the future. 
That is uh, assistant coach Rick Dillinger, who was the high school uh, softball coach of Rene Gillespie uh, some uh, couple decades ago uh, before Rene uh, came back to uh, take over the head coaching position here at the University of Iowa. Rick Dillinger was the first person that she asked for uh, to be on the bench with her, and he certainly has been there for four years. Again, it's a developing uh, program, and uh, they're getting better. they got some good, solid, young talent, just haven't yet had that breakout game, and that's what they're hoping they can get at least today and then carry it into the rest of this season. Brianna Vesquez is in the circle for the Hawks here to begin this uh, uh, second game of the three-game series. This is her 21st game started, 24 appearances she has made, and she's uh, bat, uh, pitching against Melina. Uh, Melina Wilkinson, uh, Wilkinson, uh, the uh, freshman left fielder uh, for Brianna Vasquez. Uh, she has five complete games. She has thrown 86 innings, 107 hits. She's given up 67 runs, 57 of them earned. She's walked 43 and struck out 73. She has a 4.64 ERA. Here is the 0-1 that's pitch and bounced foul right in the box. So for the Hawks, they've got uh, Amber Deseta at third base. Sofia Mares is at shortstop. Sammy Diaz at second. Kalena Burns at first. Behind the plate is Tristan Doster, the freshman from Fort Dodge. Brianna Vesquez in the circle. An 0-2 count on Wilkinson. Here's the 0-2. It's now one ball and two strikes. A pitch that's up high. Riley Sheehy out in left field. Briley Klosterman in center and Nia Carter in right field. On a sunny day, but a chilly day and a very brisk wind out of the west-northwest at about 20 to 30 miles per hour. We're going to have that all day long today. Here's the one, two, that's an off-speed pitch. Amber DeSena to her left, picks it up, and fires across the diamond to Kalena Burns for out number one. Thank you for tuning in to AM800 KXIC this afternoon. The Hawks and the Ohio State Buckeyes, as I'd mentioned uh, briefly in the pregame, it was a 7-3 to three win for Ohio State yesterday. They put a couple runs at the top of the third, three more in the top of the fourth on a three-run home run to make a five-to-nothing game out of it. Iowa would come back in the bottom of the sixth inning yesterday with solo home runs from uh, Riley Sheehy and Riley Klosterman to close the gap to five to two. And then in the top of the seventh inning, Nikki Carver, the uh, all-big tenor for Ohio State, clubbed a two-run home run to make it seven to two. Iowa would get a solo shot from Denali Lecker in the bottom of the seventh inning, but that is all that they could get, and it ended up seven to three. One out here in the top of the first inning for the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes that have uh, J.C. Ruberti at the plate. Ruberti batting 302, 29 hits and 96 at bats. Three doubles, two triples, and a couple of home runs to her credit. Here is the off speed pitch that is called strike two, one ball and two strikes. Certainly uh, one of the strengths of Brianna Vasquez, the grad transfer from. Central Florida is as she can place those off-speed pitches, keep the batters at bay. Here's the one-two, one that swung on and missed by Ruberti. She's a senior right fielder out of uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ruberti in yesterday's game was one for four, and that one hit was a double. Down on the count of the ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch, an off-speed pitch again. Ruberti gets out in front of it and will just foul it back into the backstop. Hawkeyes in their white pant gold uniform today as today is a gold out. Come into the game, wear as much gold on you as you possibly can. That's the uh, dominant color of the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Ohio State in complete white, jersey and pant. Here's the one-two again. This time, Ruberti will foul it back behind the back, uh, behind the uh, third base line and out of play. So the count remains the same at a ball and two strikes. Ohio State coming into the game at 24 and 10 and 5 and 5 in the Big Ten. Iowa 18 and 21 overall, 1 and 11 in the Big Ten. Here is one that's just fisted, bounced right to in front of Tristan Doster, and a long way for Brianna Vasquez to go to get to it, and by that time, Ruberti gets on base, give it an infield single, so a one-out single here in the top of the first inning. Bring up Sam Hackenbrack. Hackenbrack 
with a 370 batting average, 37 hits and 100 at bats. Yesterday's game, she was two for four. With a couple of RBIs, here's the first pitch as she takes a good cut at it and will miss, or excuse me, foul it back into the backstop. Hacken, uh, Hackenbrack has hit 11 home runs in her last 21 games. So all of her home runs have come in the last 21 games that uh, Ohio State has played. Here's the 0-1 from Brianna Vasquez. Hackenbrack will get around on it and foul it back into the pasture land. <laughs> well, that's a time-honored tradition here at Bob Pearl Field where the Iowa softball diamonds were uh, developed over three and a half decades ago. It used to be a pasture land here. So they're, so they're living the memory of what used to be here. Every time a foul ball goes to uh, the south and east of the press box. Of course, it, you know, the press box faces the Coralville Strip, which is buzzing again here today. Of course, on a Saturday, you can imagine people out shopping, eating, doing whatever they do on a Saturday, but they're out there moving around. Here's the one-two. That is up and away, and they appeal down to the first base umpire, and she says, no, nope, did not go around. Runner at first base in J.C. Ruberti. She just singled here moments ago. There's one out. And Ohio State's top of the first inning, 2-2 count on Sam Hackenbrack, junior designated player. Here's the pitch that she rips out to left field, the line drive right at Riley Sheehy. Couldn't come in and play it in the air, so she played it off the bounce. I mean, it couldn't have been more than 12 feet off the ground all the way out to her on the one hop. And so back-to-back -back singles for Ohio State. Puts runners at first and second and brings up Nikki Carver. Nikki Carver with yesterday's home run. Gives her 27 career home runs. That home run coming in the top of the seventh inning. Iowa had quieted her through most of the game. She was 0 for 3 going into that fourth at bat. One out. She has teammates in front of her at first and second. There is Brianna Vasquez. The pitch to Carver, an off-speed pitch called strike one. Again, that off-speed pitch fooling any batters, but it happens to be Ohio State today. And Brianna Vasquez ahead in the count. No balls and one strike. Here is the 0-1 to Carver as she lifts up into the infield. And now it's Tristan Doster coming out of the stance. About three strides down the first baseline in foul territory to make the catch. That is a big out, folks. Nikki Carver is quite the hitter and the player for Ohio State. Whenever you can take the bat out of the hands of a hitter like that, you've done yourself a favor. Two gone and McKenzie Bump at the plate. McKenzie, the sophomore, third baseman, batting 345, left-hander, 20 hits and 58 at-bats coming into the game. Here's the first pitch. It's down and away, so it's ball one. Bump in yesterday's game had a hit. Nine different players in the Ohio State lineup yesterday had at least one hit. Three of them had two hits. Here's the 1-0 from Brianna Vasquez. Lifted out to right field over the top of Nia Carter. She goes back, can't reach up for it and make the catch at the warning track. It bounces off the wall. Ohio State's going to score two. There are two runners on base and a triple for McKenzie Bump. She got a hold of a pitch that was right over the top of the plate, pulled it over the top of Nia Carter out to right field. And J.C. Ruberti scored from second, Sam Hackenbrack from first, and Ohio State now with a 2 to nothing lead. Two outs, McKenzie Bump at third, and it brings up Cammy Quartercracks. Quartercracks, 308 hitter, a freshman. 28 hits in 91 at bats. And she looks at a pitch that's up and away, so it's ball one. Three doubles and a triple to her credit. And Cordo Cracks uh, was one for two yesterday. She walked at one at bat. Ahead on the count now to ball and no strikes. Here is the 1-0 that she hits out to center field. Brody Klosterman racing in, can't get to it. And it falls in for a base hit. And the McKenzie Bump will score from third. Number 21, center field. So that's three hits for Ohio State here. 
They've scored three runs with two outs. And it brings up Meggie Adi. Adi playing center field and the senior. Adi, a 257 hitter with 28 hits and 109 at bats. Left-handed hitter. Yesterday, two for two with a run scored. Here is the first pitch tour that's down and away. Yesterday's first inning, Ohio State sent four players to the plate and really were ineffective in that at bat. Had one runner on. Here they've had three on. Now they've got a fourth runner on. They have a three-nothing lead. Here's a pitch that just inside on Meggie Adi. Very brisk wind out here today, but it is a sunshine day. There's no doubt that a lot of light out there from the sun. Here's the 2-0 from Miranda Vasquez. It's called strike one. Two balls and one strike. On Meggie Adi. Here is the 2-1 from Miranda Vasquez, one that she'll lift down the left field line and foul just out of the reach of Amber DeSena too far away from Sofia Morris. Brianna Vasquez's last appearance in the circle. She started game two of the Nebraska game, of that Nebraska game. Went two innings. Walk three batters. Here is the 2-2 two -two to Adi. Again, Adi will foul it back into the backstop. Brianna also started in game one of the Nebraska doubleheader, went two innings, gave up four hits, three runs, all three were earned. Even count at two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch and off speed, just right down the first base line and foul. Kalana Burns doing a nice job of trying to dive for it, but it was foul before it got over top of the first base, over first base, and so we're back at square one with a 2-2 count and two outs. Ohio State with a 3-0 lead here in the top of the first inning. Here is the 2-2, and here's one out to left field and pushing Riley Sheehy back, but into that wind, Riley able to get underneath it and make the catch, but Ohio State picks up three runs and leads this game 3-0 as we head into the bottom of the first inning. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM800 KXIC. begin before the age of 14. With those kinds of numbers, it's time we do something about it. It all starts with us telling our kids that it's okay to speak up. If you're ready to start the conversation, go to iHeartRadio.com talk for helpful tips. This has been brought to you by the Child Mind Institute and iHeartRadio. Hi, this is Joe Cordell with the law firm Cordell & Cordell. When the prospect of divorce becomes a reality, you need a partner that you can count on. If you're a man in this situation, consider contacting Cordell & Cordell. We've helped men navigate complex legal matters for 30 years. Contact the domestic litigation firm of Cordell & Cordell to schedule an appointment with one of our firm's Des Moines area attorneys, a partner men can count on. 515-518-0000. Online at CordellCordell.com. That's CordellCordell.com. I'm beginning to believe that other than love and religion, nothing changes your life more than moving your credit score 120 points. I'm John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and CEO of Operation Hope, and we're working to expand and lift up your credit scores. Operation Hope is partnering with major financial institutions to bring hope inside to places where you shop and flock. Through the Hope 700 Credit Score Communities Initiative, we are helping people with free counseling, loan originations, modifications, and more. Go to operationhope.org today. Nothing changes America like a role model. I had one growing up. My name is John Hope Bryant. I wear a suit today because my dad wore a suit when I was growing up. The kids want to be rap stars, athletes, and drug dealers all too often because of what they see in their neighborhood. My mission now is to give them something different. You play a role in it. It's called America 2020 and Hope Business in a Box Academy. Go to OperationHope.org today and join the movement. Make school cool once again. Visit us on the web at operationhope.org. Hawkeye Sports and Fox Sports. AM 800, KXIC Iowa City. Available everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Now number one for podcasting. 
You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye softball on 800 KXIC. Back at Bob Pearl Field, the University of Iowa Hawkeyes at the plate. Brody Klosterman in a count of no balls and two strikes, working against Allison Smith, the sophomore right-handed pitcher. She comes in with her 10th start. She has 15 and two-thirds innings pitch. She has 51 hits given up, 34 runs, 29 of them earned, and a 4.01 ERA. And she's working on Bradley Klosterman. Klosterman still at an 0-2 count, but fouling off pitches. Allison Smith walked, has walked 33 batters and struck out 52 here in this in her sophomore season. Allison Smith, a sophomore out of Champion, Ohio. Ahead on the count at no balls and two strikes. The leadoff hitter, Bradley Klosterman. She throws one off the plate, and Bradley doesn't chase it. One ball and two strikes. Allison Smith, a year ago, had 12 wins, which was the most by any freshman pitcher in the Big Ten last year. Ahead on the count of one ball and two strikes. She was 12 and 12 last year, had 10 complete games, pitched 132 and two thirds innings. Here's the one two that's upstairs, so it's two balls and two strikes. And Riley Klosterman worked that count. From 0 and 2 now to two balls and two strikes. So I have a chance now to get a level pitch and see if she can't drive it. Smith actually won more games than any pitcher last year for Ohio State. Here is the 2-2 again, a pitch that's down and away, so it's three balls and two strikes. Peyton Burrish was the uh, second pitcher last year, but she, uh, Peyton had more innings pitched at 136, an 11-6 and six record. So Allison Smith, and then, of course, we saw Alexi Handley, a graduate student uh, from Auburn. Here's... A hit out to left field, and a nice piece of that bat there for Briley Klosterman. Just lifts it over the top of third baseman for Ohio State, Mackenzie Bump, and well in front of the left fielder. And so the Hawks with a leadoff single from Briley Klosterman, and brings up Nia Carter. Nia with a 434 batting average, 49 hits, 113 at bats. She currently on a seven game hitting streak. Had two in yesterday's 7-3 loss. Here is the first pitch to her that she tries to bunt, slap bunt it, and fouls it off. She was 16 multi-hit games this season alone. One of them is a five-hit game, which ties a program record with three other former Iowa Hawkeyes. That was five for five, five hits in a single seven-inning game. Here is the 0-1 tour. Looked to bunt, pulls the bat back, and now it's one ball and one strike. She's been on hitting streaks all season. Earlier, she had a seven-game hitting streak. That's where she is now. She also had a six-game hitting streak from the Southeast Missouri game on March 15 through uh, the Indiana game back on March 19. Here's the one-and-one -one to her. She hits out into center field, but right at center fielder, Number two, catcher, Tristan. Meggie playing it nicely. The line drive hit that is caught by Adi, and it's one out. Tristan Doster now, the freshman uh, freshman catcher. Had a decent year at the plate, batting 306, 22 hits and 72 at-bats. Here's the first pitch from Allison Smith, it's strike one on the outside corner. Yesterday, Tristan 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Down on the count at no balls and a strike. Here is the pitch from Smith that's upstairs, so it's one ball and one strike. Well, the freshman, Tristan Doster out of Fort Dodge. Two-time first-team All-Stater across the Hawkeye State. And the largest class of 5A has a school record of home runs hit at Fort Dodge. Here's the 1-1 one, one that's down and in on her. So it's two balls and one strike. Coming out of the Minnesota series, 
She did not get hit in the last game in that series, but she had singles in the previous two, a single against Drake and three hits in Maryland. So she was on a four-game hitting streak then. Here's the 2-1 that she swings at and misses. So she currently on a three-game hitless slide. Started the season with a five-game hitting streak. Two of them were two-hit games. Now it becomes a three-ball and two-strike count. Ohio State leads 1-0. We're in the bottom of the first inning. The Hawks at the plate. Mid-afternoon game in Iowa City. A lot of conjecture about really what to do with tomorrow's game because of the impending winter weather going to come by. Here's the 3-2 that is fouled down the right field line and out of play. But they stayed right with a single game today at 2 o'clock, and tomorrow's game will be a noon game. Sounds like uh, any kind of precipitation coming from the uh, winter weather will not arrive until about mid-afternoon. Here's the 3-2 that Tristan gets around on, but she'll just lightly foul it down the first baseline. So the count remains the same at three balls and two strikes. Roddy Klosterman at first base, singling. Nia Carter fouled that with a fly out to center field. And now Tristan Doster at the play with a full count on her. Working against Allison Smith. Here is the 3-2 that, again, she'll line down the right field line, but it goes foul. Just a little bit behind on those pitches, but she's able to get enough of it to foul it off. And the count remains the same at 3-2. and two. Here's the 3-2 from Allison Smith. And Tristan will hit it off the fist. And coming out to make the catch from behind the plate, Taylor Pack, the senior. And that's two outs in Iowa's bottom of the first inning. Kalena Burns will step to the plate. Kalena, the junior out of Corona, California. Had a hit in yesterday's game. 264 hitter, 23 hits and 87 at bats. 30th game started and 36 played. She's been consistently going in the starting lineup the last month. Two outs, brought it close to a minute first base. Here is the first pitch to her. That's down and away, so it's ball one. First game of the Minnesota series a week ago yesterday. She was two for three, two home runs, a two-run two home run and a three-run home run. Career high of five RBIs in that game for Kalena. Here's the 1-0 that becomes strike one, so it's one ball and one strike. Hit a solo home run in the Nebraska game one. The only run the Hawks scored in that game, losing it in five innings, 14 to one. Count even at one ball and one strike. Here's the pitch from Allison Smith, one that is down and in, but Kalena goes after it, swings and misses. Kalena a year ago had five multi-hit games doesn't sound like a lot, but four of them were three-hit games. She had two of those in a four-game consecutive schedule. Minnesota and Rutgers were the two teams that felt the wrath of that. Here is the 2-2. Brody Klosterman on the move to steal second base, and she gets it. No attempt to get her at second base, so for Briley... That is her 10th stolen base in 12 attempts. She stands at second with two outs. Hawks trailing 3-0. Kalena Burns at the plate. Here's the pitch from Smith, one that she throws past Kalena Burns, and that will end the Hawks in the bottom of the first inning. Hawks get a runner on, can't move her across the plate, so we head into the top of the second. Ohio State leads this game 3 to nothing. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM800 KXIC. Technology, along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120 inch.
10-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye softball on 800 KXIC. Welcome back to Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa. Game two of the three-game series between the Hawks and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Certainly want to thank the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics for their sponsorship of today's Iowa softball game and softball broadcast on AM800 KXIC. I had a chance to speak with Dr. Matt Bolier who is the team physician for University of Iowa softball, and talking about arm injuries, pitching injuries uh, more specifically. Uh, but uh, with any kind of injury, as he had mentioned, uh, certainly if you're having arm troubles, uh, give the University of Iowa Sports uh, Medicine office a call. Set up an appointment to come in and uh, be seen by some of the best uh, in the land here at the University of Iowa. So Ohio State comes to the plate, the number eight hitter and Taylor Pack, the senior catcher. She squares to bunt, pulls it back, and it's ball one. Three nothing the lead for Ohio State. Taylor Pack hitting just 178. This is her 21st game started in 26 games played, eight hits and 45 at bats. Here's the 1 0 to her that called strike one right down the middle. She does have a double and a triple to her credit. And it's certainly a base-stealing threat when she gets on base. She is four for four on the season. Here's the 1-1, one, one, two packs. She lifts it down third baseline, and it'll go out of play. So it's a one and two count on her. Hannah Bryan caught most of yesterday, if not, and, and Pack would come in later in the game to wear the gear. Down on the count of the ball and two strikes. Brianna Vesquez with a pitch that's off speed up and away, and it's ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Pack a year ago started and played 42 games. Here is the 2 2 tour that she'll lift. Out to center field, pushing Bradley Klosterman back to the wall, and it goes over the center field wall. It drifted and drifted and drifted, and just out of the reach of Bradley Klosterman and Ohio State with yet another home run on the season. I think it surprised everybody, including Taylor Pack, that for her is her first home run of the season. She didn't hit a home run last year. It's the first of her career right here in Iowa City. And you can't really say much about the wind giving it an effort because it was hit semi into the wind. It just was high enough and drifted far enough to make it a four to nothing game. Ohio State with the lead. Now it's Caitlin Farley, the freshman second baseman at the plate. Farley, a 241 hitter, 13 hits and 54 at bats. A double and a triple to her credit. Here is the 0-1 tour that she'll take a look at and strike one. Farley yesterday started at second base, was one for two in the day. Was pinch hit for by Taylor Heckman later on in the game. That uh, in the top of the fourth inning. And here's a pitch that's swung on and missed. And so, out number one, the first strike out of the game for Brianna Vasquez. Number 23, left fielder. And it brings up to the top of the order, Melina Wilkeson. Freshman left fielder. She grounded out to Amber DeSena to start this game off. And then it was two singles. Here is the first pitch tour that's called strike one. After those two singles by Ruberti and Hackenbrack, fly out with two outs, and then McKenzie bump with the two RBI triple. That's what got scoring started for Ohio State. They'll lead it now 4-0. Here is the 0-1 from Brianna Vasquez, an off-speed pitch. 
bounded right to Kalena Burns at first base. She makes the unassisted put out. That's two gone at Ohio State's top of the second inning. J.C. Ruberti steps to the plate, got a hit in her first at bat and scored on the two RBI double by McKenzie, uh, triple by McKenzie Bump. Ruberti a 302 average, now 30 hits and 97 at bats. Three triples, a couple doubles, and a couple home runs to her credit. First pitch to her is off the plate, so it's ball one. Iowa baseball going on up at Dwayne Banks Field. The Hawkeyes defeated Minnesota yesterday in last night's game, 9-3. to three. Here's the 1-0 off-speed pitch called strike two. In that Iowa baseball win last night, Keaton Anthony was three for five from the play with three RBIs, had a double and a home run. Adam Major went eight innings, gave up six hits, three runs, only one of them earned, and he struck out 11 Minnesota batters. Here's a ground ball right to Sammy Diaz at second. It bounces off of her right shoulder and in front of her, and she's not able to get to it and pick it up in time. So that'll put Ruberti on. And an error issued to Sammy Diaz at second base. Just a bad hop. She was in front of it, down on it, and then it just hopped right up and bounced off of her shoulder. So with two outs, J.C. Ruberti at first base, Sam Hackenbrack, who also singled and scored in that first inning at the plate, looks at strike one. Hackenbrack, the leading hitter on this Ohio State team at 370, coming in 37 of 100. One for four yesterday with a strikeout. Here is the 0-1 tour that's off the plate, so it's one ball and no strikes. Player of the week back in the week of March 21st. For the Ohio State Buckeyes. Here is the 1-1 from Brianna Vasquez, an off-speed pitch and an attempt steal. Nice play by Tristan Doster to Sophia Morris to get J.C. Ruberti trying to steal second base. And the Hawkeyes say no way, and that's out number three. So... Taylor Pack with a solo home run to make it Ohio State's one run in this inning. They leave it four to nothing heading into the bottom of the second inning. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball and AM 800 KXIC. Operation Hope is partnering with major financial institutions to bring hope inside the places where you shop and flock. Through the Hope 700 Credit Score Communities Initiative, we are helping people with free counseling, loan originations, modifications, and more. Go to OperationHope.org today. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye Softball on 800 KXIC. And it's game number two of the three-game series between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Ohio State Buckeyes from Bob Pearl Field. I'm Jerry Koala on this Saturday afternoon, 40 47 degrees approximately here in Iowa City, but the wind at 10 to 20, gusting to 30 miles per hour, making it a little bit chilly out there, but the fans have come to view the Hawks and this Ohio State Buckeye softball team. Ohio State, a team that's been receiving votes in the top 25 of National Fast Pitch Coaches Association. They're a home run hitting team. They've got some pretty good pitching. They had a transfer in, and we saw her yesterday, Alexi Hanley. Pitched all seven innings against the Hawkeyes. 6-1 lanky lefty. Help shut down the Hawks. Now Denali Lecker will step to the plate. Right-handed batter. She was one for three in yesterday's uh, game number one. That was a solo home run in the bottom of the seventh inning to make it a 7-3 game. Denali at 277 on the season, 26 hits and 94 at-bats. Three doubles, a triple, and six home runs. Leads the team in hitting home runs. And the count evens up at one ball and one strike. Denali pitched the last two innings of the game yesterday. Gave up a couple of hits, a couple of runs. Both were earned out to the two-run home run from Nikki Carver. Ahead of the count now at two balls and one strike. The sophomore out of Ogden. Just outside of Ames. 
Won a Class 2A title two summers ago. Beat a real strong North Lynn team that's just north of Cedar Rapids. Here's the 2-1 pitch that's now down and in, so it's three balls and one strike. Hawks need to get some base runners. So we talked to head coach Rick Dillinger prior to the game. It's about consistency at the plate and do it in high volume. Here's the 3-1 from Allison Smith. Pitch that's outside. And Denali Lecker draws a leadoff walk for the Hawks. And for Denali, it is the eighth base on balls that she has been issued this year. And it'll bring up Sophia Morris. Morris kind of on a hot streak here recently. Had two hits in yesterday's game. She was two for four, both singles. The junior out of Johnston was the National Junior College Player of the Year last year coming out of Des Moines Area Community College, led the nation, junior college nation, in six different offensive categories, runs scored with 105, hits with 117, home runs with 29, RBIs with 92, total bases at 234, and she walked 40 times. All of those categories did Sophia Morris lead National Junior College Athletic Association. Junior from Johnston. Just out of, outside of Des Moines. Here's the first pitch to her. She squares the bunt, pulls it back, and looks at strike one on the outside corner. Nobody out in Iowa's bottom of the second inning. The Hawks trailing 4 nothing. Denali Leckard just earned a five-pitch walk. And Sophia Morris now down on the count at no balls and one strike to the sophomore Allison Smith. Smith, similar to Lexi Handley yesterday in height, Hanley at six foot one and a lefty. So she's got a long stride and a long reach and a good, good quick snap release. Allison Smith at 5'11. A little bigger and stronger. Has good command of her pitches. Ohio State defense now talking in the circle about what they want to do. Denali Lecker at first. Actually, Haley Down now has come in to run for Denali. Here is the 0-1 to Sophia Morris, and it's upstairs, so it's one ball and one strike. Haley Down, freshman from Norwalk. Pinch running for Denali Lecker here in the bottom of the second inning. Here is the 1-1. Sophia squares the bunt, pulls the bat back. That ball crosses the plate on the outside part, and it's called strike two. Haley's uh, last appearance was uh, in the Nebraska game two on Tuesday where she pinch ran and had nothing to show for it. Down on the count is Sophia Morris at one and two. Here's the pitch from Smith. The pitch that's outside. Sophia does not chase. So two balls and two strikes. Ohio State with three runs in the first. One more in the second. The solo home run by Taylor Pack. And they lead it four to nothing in the bottom of the second. Here is the 2-2 to Sophia Morris, and it's upstairs. So it's three balls and two strikes. Morris was hitless in the Nebraska game, had a hit in the third game of the Minnesota series. She's kind of been on a hitless streak here in the last 10 games. Now let me count them up for you. She draws a walk here in the last 14 games. She's had four hits. And so drawing the walk, back-to-back -back walks by Allison Smith. And for Smith, those are 34th and 35th based on balls that she's issued to opponent batters. And with nobody out, the Hawks have runners at first and second. Sammy Diaz will step to the plate. Diaz, a sophomore out of Cypress, California, south and east of the Los Angeles area. As the Hawks offense meeting just in front of the Hawkeye dugout where head coach Rene Gillespie corners third base. Trina Prater down the line at first base. Having a chat with Sammy Diaz before she steps into the batter's box and play resumes. Ohio State doing the same thing defensively. It's four to nothing. You can see really how important this situation is to both of these teams. Nobody out, and the Hawks have to play with nobody 
with runners at first and second. Sammy Diaz at the plate. 0 for 3 in yesterday's game. Here's the first pitch. She squares to bunt and will bunt it high but foul and out of play. Pitch that was a rise ball that was getting up away from her. Fortunately, it just fouls it back. Sammy on the season, a 196 hitter. 10 hits and 51 at bats. Yesterday was 0 for 2 with a walk and a strikeout. Down on the count at no balls and a strike. Here's the pitch from Allison Smith. She squares to bunt again. This one, same spot as the last one. This time she pulls the bat back, and it becomes ball one. One and one count on the sophomore, Sammy Diaz. Has had one multi-hit game this season. That against Notre Dame back on the 25th of February where she was two for three. One of them hits was a double. Here is a pitch that's right down the middle, and Sammy pulls the bat back after showing bunt, and it's called strike two. So it's one ball and two strikes. Sammy's been bouncing around in the field. She's played outfield half a dozen times. She's been at second base primarily since, and she's done some pinch hitting for head coach Renee Gillespie. Here's the one, two that's down at, oh, he's gonna call it strike three. In fact, it was down and into me. But Sammy down on strikes, that's the second strikeout of the game for Allison Smith. And with one out, brings up Amber DeSena. Sophomore from Concord, California. It's outside the Bay Area. 0 for two in yesterday's game with the walk. Here is the first pitch as she hits to the left and coming around third base is Haley Down. She's going to slide across the plate for the first run of the game for the Hawks on the base hit by Amber DeSena. The throw going home gets away from the catcher and so the runners advance to uh, third and second. So see if uh, Sophia Morris will be at third and Amber DeSena after the single will go to second. Haley Down will score from second base. And the Hawks in business here with one out. They've got to run in, and runners at second and third, so that takes the force play out of the picture. And it brings up Riley Sheehy, the senior. Senior left fielder Riley Sheehy, one for two in yesterday's game with an RBI, that being a home run. Hit the first home run of her career in the bottom of the sixth inning yesterday which led Bradley Klosterman to hitting a solo home run as well. They had the game 5-2. to two. At that point, Bradley, the number nine hitter out of Newtown, Pennsylvania, and a senior. Here's the 0-1 tour. Pitch that's upstairs. Does a nice job to lay off of it. Denali Lecker started this at bat with a walk, was pinch run for by Haley Down. Down moved to second base So as Sophia Morris walked. Strikeout to Sammy Diaz, and then Amber DeSena now just delivers an RBI single and moves on to second with Sofia Morris at third. Here's a pitch that's on that outside corner. This home plate umpire with a wide strike zone. One ball and two strikes. To Riley Sheehy. Infield is in a couple of steps. Got to get that play at the plate if they can. Here's the one-two from Allison Smith that's up and away. Two balls and two strikes. She has hit safely in four of her last, five of her last seven games. Here's the two-two from her that she'll reach out and poke foul into the softball diamond behind us. A year ago, had eight multi-hit games. Two of them were three-hit games against uh, in game number two against Northwestern and then early in the season against Michigan State when it was an all-Big Ten schedule last year. Here's one that she hits out the left field. Will it stay fair? It doesn't. Just to the left of the left field foul line. She just reached out and poked it. That would have been a nice two-run scoring Single for Riley Shee, but as it is, she'll have to go back to the left-handed batter's box with the two and two count on her. Sheehy batting 246, 14 hits and 57 at bats. No doubles or triples, but she did, did hit her first career home run yesterday. Here is the 2-2. Again, it's down and away. Three balls and two strikes. Riley Klosterman 
on deck. That's the top of the order for the Hawks. See if Riley Sheehy gets something up, get going here on this at bat. Here's the 3 2 from Smith. One that Roddy lifts out to left field, but right at the left fielder. She had to play the win, and a nice tag and a score by Sophia Morris. Out there in left field, Melina Wilkinson, the freshman, she was, that ball must, must have been zigzagging on her a little bit. She was able to come up with the catch. And on the catch, Sophia Morris will score, so the sack fly for Riley Sheehy is out number two. And it brings up Riley Klosterman in the top of the order. Score now four to two with Ohio State leading. Here is Klosterman, the first pitch to her, an off-speed pitch that she lifts it up into the infield and drifting foul, it goes into the stands. Fortunately, it was an off-speed pitch that she got out in front of, popped it up into the air, but falls back into the stands. So 0-1-1 on the count on the sophomore out of North Liberty, Bradley Klosterman. Had a hit yesterday and one for three in the game. An RBI scored the run. It was a solo home run in that game. Here is the 0-1 that's upstairs, so it's one ball and one strike. Briley batting 260 on the season with 26 hits and 100 at bats. Eight doubles. No triples and a couple of home runs. She scored herself 26 runs. She leads the team in runs scored. Here is the 1-1 tour that is outside. Two balls and one strike. Amber DeSena at third base after singling in Haley down. Sophia Morris would score in the sack fly by Riley Sheehy. Hawks with two runs here in the bottom of the second inning. Trail it 4-2. to two. Brody Klosterman at the plate with a 2-1 count on her. Here's the pitch. That's upstairs again. Three balls and one strike. Hawks making things happen here today. We're talking to Rick Dillinger and even head coach Renee Gillespie. Just, they're just so close to busting loose. Got to get over that hump. Take the right bat to the plate. Here's the 3-1 that Riley will take a good cut at and miss. Allison Smith just threw it right by her. I don't think she was anticipating it being as hard a pitch as it was. So it's a full count. Three balls and two strikes with two outs. To Brody Klosterman, Amber DeSena at second. Here is the windup in the pitch, and it's ball four to Riley Klosterman. Ball couldn't have been far off the play, but Riley has a very keen eye. She walked once yesterday, and for her, that is the 25th base on balls that she has been issued this season. And we get to Nia Carter with runners at first and second. Hawks with two runs in here in this bottom of the second inning. Trailing four to two. And the junior from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Mia Carter at the plate. Here is the first pitch tour that she'll foul into the backstop. Mia from out in the valley east of L.A. Really is having herself as good a year this year as she had last year. She batted... Uh, well, it ended up 296, but she was over 300 for the longest part of last year. 42 hits and 142 at bats. A couple of doubles, a couple of triples. She has the same doubles and triples this year, but batting four. Here's one that she lifted on the left field line coming into the game at 434, and she flew out to Adi in center field in her first at bat. Has teammates at first and second looking to extend this at bat. Nia Carter at the plate. Down on the count at no balls and two strikes to the sophomore Allison Smith. Here's the pitch from Smith. It's down and away, so it's one ball and two strikes. Outfield shading her to the left, and they're in about two or three steps. Center field, Adi is almost in left center field. Left fielder is further to the left field line. Here is the 1-2 that's upstairs, an off-speed pitch that... Nia won't go for. Nia with the right pitch, she can drive it. We've seen her hit it right in the gap in right center field, and I'll tell you what, there's quite a gap there right now between right field and center field if she can get the right pitch to hit. Here's the 2-2 from Allison Smith, one that she'll 
dribble to third base and across the diamond, and that ends the Hawkeyes here in this bottom of the second inning. McKenzie bumped to her left, picked it up, and threw across the diamond for the third out of this bottom of the second inning. But the Hawks get a couple runs, close the gap to four to two. Ohio State coming to bat in the top of the third. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. in your mouth so you know it's creamy cheesy and delicious this gooey mac makes me cheese every time <laughs> order dinner delivered on the chick-fil-a app today delivery fee and other restrictions apply real guests paid for their testimonials you're listening to university of iowa hawkeye softball on 800 kxic welcome back to bob pearl field it's game two of the three game series between the iowa hawkeyes and the uh ohio state buckeyes And we're heading into the top of the third inning. And the Hawks trailing now four to two. Hackenbrack in her first at bat, singled and scored. And it's facing Brianna Vasquez. Here is the first pitch from Vasquez. And it's a swing and a miss. So one ball and two strikes on Hackenbrack. We're into the top of the third inning. Brianna Vasquez will go as far as head coach Renee Gillespie can push her. Here's a swing and a miss by Hackenbrack. Strikes her down. So that is uh, strikeout number two on the game for Brianna Vasquez. And it brings up Nikki Carver. Carver popped up to Tristan Noster in her first at bat. Here's one that she'll lace down the right field line over the wall, but foul. She had an opposite field home run yesterday in the top of the seventh inning. That gave uh, Ohio State the 7-2 to lead. She down on the count of no balls and a strike. Here's a pitch that's down and in on her, so it's one ball and one strike. One ball and one strike now on Nikki Carver, the senior. Here is the pitch from Brianna Vasquez. That's ball four. Actually, it hit her. So she heads to first base after being hit by a pitch. And for Nikki Carver on the season, that's the 13th time that she has been grazed with a pitch. Head coach Renee Gillespie talking to the home plate umpire. I think probably to determine whether or not that Nikki Carver would try to get out of the way of that pitch. But to no avail, she remains at first base. That'll bring up M uh, McKenzie Bump. Bump tripled in her last at bat, a two RBI triple. And she would eventually score the third run of that first inning. 
as teammate Nikki Carver at first base. Here's the first pitch to her that is a ball down and away. So one ball and no strikes to Mackenzie Bump. Here is the 1-0 that's down and away. So it's two balls and no strikes. Trying to be careful with Mackenzie Bump. Bump with a batting average at 345 with 21 hits and 59 at bats. She added to her RBI total now up to 11 with the two RBI triple in her first at bat. They have in the count at two balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch from Brianna Vasquez. Pitch that is right across the plate. Two balls and one strike. So the 2-1 from Brianna Vasquez. To Mackenzie Bump, a bouncer to Sofia Mares. So hop it to Sammy Diaz at second base. They get the force, but they will not get Bump running down the line to first base. So they get the lead runner. And a nice play by Sofia Mares. That's the second out. And that'll put Mackenzie Bump at first base on the fielder's choice. Bring up Cammy. Quarter cracks. Uh, she singled in her first at bat. Runner at first, two gone. Here's the pitch from Brianna Vasquez. Two quarter cracks, and that is a called strike one. Freshman shortstop. Cami, a 308 hitter, 20. Nine hits in 92 at bats. Here is the 0 1 tour that she bounces up to the left side. Nice play by Sophia Morris. She judged it coming off the glove of Brianna Vasquez as she was running towards second base. It took another huge hop. She judged it beautifully, snagged it with her glove, and in stride steps on second base for the force. So the Hawks. Keep Ohio State from adding to their 4-2 lead. And we'll come to the plate in the bottom of the third inning, trailing 4-2-2. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. Sunday, 9 a.m. on 800 KXIC. It is Positively Petland with Ron Solzrud from Petland, Iowa City. What's the breed of the week? It is the Pomsky. Is this the perfect breed for you? I, I messed up here. I, I can't we're get it figured into out. How to control that dog bark yeah, that's can. going on all the time oh, in your house. Yes. Exactly. And when the dog yeah, give me the thumbs up or down, yeah. 9 a.m. Sunday morning right here. Positively Petland from Petland, Iowa City on AM 800 KXIC. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye <coughs> Softball on 800 KXIC. Welcome back to Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa. It's uh, the Hawks and the Ohio State Buckeyes. So we head into the bottom of the third inning, and it is Iowa coming to the plate. Tristan Doster at the plate. First pitch coming from Allison Smith is ball down low. So it's one ball and no strikes on the freshman Catcher from Fort Dodge. Here is the 1 0. Now becomes two balls and no strikes. Excuse me, one ball and one strike on the foul ball. Allison Smith, the sophomore, in the circle. Here is the 1 1. That is a slow hopper to third and across the diamond for the putout. Mackenzie Bump on Tristan Doster. So that's one gone in Iowa's bottom of the third inning, and Kalena Burns will come to the plate. Kalena struck out in her first at-bat back in the first inning. 
batting 264 coming into this uh, into this game. Now 23 out of 88 in the season. Three doubles, a triple, and three home runs. A couple of those home runs came in uh, game number one of the Minnesota series a week ago yesterday. A two-run home run and a three-run home run to help the Hawks come from behind to win that game 9-8. Down here 4-2 in the bottom of the third inning. Here is the pitch from Allison Smith on Kalena Burns. It's down and away from her, so it's ball one. One ball and no strikes now on Kalena Burns. Here is the 1-0, an off-speed pitch that she'll hit to the right of second base. And Kalena Burns with her first hit of the day. And a one-out single. She heads to first base. And it'll bring up Denali Lecker. So Denali Lecker now will come to the plate.
Number seven, second baseman, Sandy Diaz. So no balls and one strike. You're not hearing me at all? So a foul back. Foul back to behind the backstop now. So it's no balls and two strikes. Two gone in Iowa's bottom of the third inning. Here's the pitch to Sammy Diaz. It gets away from the catcher as it's a, a low pitch. And the runners move up now to second and third and in scoring position. See if Sammy can make it happen here with two outs. Here is a pitch that's lifted into sh uh, shallow center field, and Maggie Adi coming in to make the play to finish off the Hawks here in the bottom of the third inning. The Hawks get a couple on, but cannot get anybody across, and so that'll end the Hawks here in the bottom of the third. It's for Ohio State, Iowa 2. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. The fourth inning for the Buckeyes, number 21, center fielder Meg Adi. Down and away, so it's two balls and no strikes. Here is the 2-0, and a pitch that is lifted foul. Back down the third baseline and out of play. So two balls and one strike. Here's the 2-1 from Brianna Vasquez, and it's a 2-2 count now. And two strikes. 
Here's one that's hit right to Sophia Morris at shortstop, and she'll make the play across the diamond to Kalena Burns. So one out in Ohio State's top of the fourth inning. And that'll bring up Taylor Pack, hit a solo home run. In her last at bat. Ohio State leading this game four to two. And here's a pitch that is called strike one. She looked to slap it and Pulls the bat back and called strike one. So it's one ball and one strike. Here's the 1-1 one, one that is fouled back behind the backstop down the left field line. So it's one ball and two strikes. Here's the one two from Brianna Vasquez. And two strike. On pack, here's one that'll bounce across the plate. Three balls and two strikes now on Pack. One out. Here is the pitch tour that she'll hit out into right center field to the right of Nia Carter. Pack around first base, and she will get into second base with a stand-up double. Taylor Pack with a solo home run and a double. And that'll bring up Caitlin Farley with one out and a runner at second base. And so a pinch runner will be coming in for Ohio State. Now they've got very, very light numbers on their jersey. I can't even believe that they're wearing what? Number 11? Okay. So Caitlin Kaufman will come in and pinch hit for Caitlin Farley. Now Kaufman yesterday hit a three-run home run. And she got a teammate on in second base. We're in the top of the fourth inning. And running for pack is Lindsey Potter, who's out on second base. Here's the 1 0. Now becomes two balls and no strikes to Caitlin Kaufman, who came in yesterday and drilled a three-run home run. She batted twice. Here is the 2-0. That now becomes two balls and one strike. Here is the 3 1 now becomes three balls and one strike. So 
So here's the 3-1 from Brianna Vasquez that's lifted out into center field where Brody Klosterman will get up underneath it and make the catch for out number two. Number 23. So with two outs, get to the top of the order, and it's Melina Wilkerson. And she's the freshman left fielder. 0 for 2 on the day. Here is the 1-0 that's grounded to Sammy Diaz. She picks and scoops it up and across the diamond to Kalena Burns. And that will end the Ohio State Buckeyes here in the top of the fourth inning. They get nobody across the plate, maintain a 4-2 lead. We're heading into the bottom of the fourth inning. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball and AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. Hang on, I'm dealing with it. Let me, let me deal with the, the engineer. I don't even know what happened. I have no idea what's going on here. Are they not getting anything from me at all? Okay, I'm trying to get this figured out. I'm trying to get it figured out, Coy. Welcome back to Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa, and it's a 4-2 Ohio State lead over the Iowa Hawkeyes, and Hawkeyes coming to plate uh, the plate here uh, with uh, Amber DeSena going to lead it off for them. Amber, Amber Singerton in her last at bat. And was stranded at second base. It was an RBI single that she had. So at the bottom of the order. Working against Allison Smith, the sophomore pitcher. Here's the first pitch of this at bat, and it's called strike one. Here is the 0-1 that's a little bit high, almost gets away from the catcher, uh, very late on the release by Allison Smith. And that's a 1-1 count. Here is the 1-1. Becomes two balls in one strike on Amber DeSena. Here is a pitch that Amber DeSena will get up underneath and going into shallow center field is the shortstop quarter cracks and she'll make the catch on that just in front of the center fielder and that will be the first out of the bottom of the fourth inning for the Hawks. And here is the first pitch to Riley Sheehy. And it's called strike. Uh, it's a ball. And the 1 0 becomes now two balls and no strikes. One out, and I was bottom of the fourth inning. And the 
2-0 now becomes two balls and one strike. Here is the 2-1 from At Ashley Smith. Lifted up into the air down the third base line and it bounced in play, but neither of the, none of the three uh, Buckeye defenders could come up with the catch. So Riley Sheehy will come back to the plate. And a two and two count on her. Four to two the lead for Ohio State. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the pitch from Allison Smith. Again, Riley will reach out and tag it fouled on the left field line. So two and two on the senior, Riley Sheehy. Here is the 2-2 that she'll lift out into the outfield. Maggie Adi shielding her eyes from the sun. Can't get to it. And Riley Sheehy will go in with a double. Adi was looking right up into that sun. She couldn't get it judged at all. And it fell about four feet to her left. And Sheehy with a hit. So that'll be a double for Riley Sheehy. She hit a, a sacrifice fly in her first at bat. Now she's on at second base. With one out and Riley Klosterman. We'll come to the plate in the top of the order for the Hawks. And a 1-0 count on Briley Klosterman from Ashley Smith. Here's one that's fouled down the third base line and foul. So, 2-1 and one count on Briley Klosterman. Here is the 2-1 that's lifted down the third base line and foul. So a 2-2 two two count on the sophomore Briley Klosterman. Riley Sheehy at second base, one out. Here is the 2-2, one that Riley will go after on the outside corner and swing and miss. So she will strike out. And that'll bring up Nia Carter. Carter 0 for 2 on the day. And it's a 1-0 count on her with the first pitch is a ball. So one ball and no strikes on the junior, Nia Carter. Here is the 1-0, one that's hit to quarter cracks at short, and she tosses it over to third base, who chases Roddy. Sheehy back to second. Mackenzie Bump will tag out Riley Sheehy, and it is the third out of the inning. So the Hawks get a runner on. Nobody across. Trail at 4-2 to two as we head into the 
Top of the fifth inning, Ohio State leads the Hawks 4-2. This is Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM800 KXIC from Learfield. Welcome back to Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa where the Hawks and the Ohio State uh, Buckeyes playing a tight ball game. Now 4-2, to two. Ohio State with three runs in the top of the first, one in the top of the second to take a 4 to nothing lead. Iowa would come back with two in the bottom of the second, and that's where we stand at 4-2 to two, heading into the top of the fifth inning. I'm Jerry Koala bringing you the broadcast here this afternoon. I want to congratulate Adeline Kenlin, who was the second team all uh, second overall in the balance beam at the NCAA Championships in Fort Worth Thursday night. Her 9.950 was the highest score on the balance beam in U of I history at the NCAA. She finished second to Olympic gold medalist Sonny Lee, 9.965. Adeline was a second team All Big Ten honoree this season. So we move into the top of the fifth inning, J.C. Ruberti. One for two on the day at the plate. Singleton scored back in the first inning. Part of the three-run first inning that Ohio State had. And she's even in the count of the ball and a strike. Brianna Vasquez, here's one to the left of Sammy Diaz. Picks it up and underhands it to Kalena Burns. She was that close. And that is the first out of the Ohio State's top of the fifth inning. Bring up Sam Hackenbrack, the designated player for the Buckeyes. Hackenbrack struck out in their last at bat, singled and scored back in the first inning, part of that three run first inning. She scored on the RBI double. Here's one to the left of Sophia Morris. She dives for it, can't make the play, and it'll be a base hit. Issued uh, to Sam Hackenbrack. And that'll bring up Nikki Carver, the number four hitter in the lineup for Ohio State. Carver in yesterday's game hit a home run in the top of the seventh inning, a two-run home run. When the score was 5-2, to two, that the Hawks had closed it on two solo home runs by Riley Sheehy and Riley Klosterman to make it 5-2 to two in the top of the seventh inning. It was a two-run home run by Nikki Carver that extended that back to 7-2. to two. And then Denali Lecker with a solo home run in the bottom of the seventh make the final score 7-3. to three. Carver, senior. First baseman, runner at first, and Sam Hackenbrack. One ball and no strikes on Carver. Brianna Vasquez in the circle for the Hawks. Here's one that gets away from Tristan Doster and scampering down to second. Goes the Ohio State runner. A pinch runner for Ohio State running for Hackenbrack. That's Tegan Cordelletti. And she is at second base. After the pass ball from Tristan Doster. One out, runner at second, Nick, Nikki Carver at the plate. Had a 3-0 count on her, give her to the green light to swing at this pitch, and she'll foul the back into the backstop. Tegan Cordelletti 
making her 33rd appearance. She's only started eight games on the season. She does have 13 runs scored, so primarily used as a pinch runner is at second base with one out in Ohio State's top of the fifth. Carver at the plate, 3-1 count, and a pitch that'll roll across the plate. And so now Nikki Carver will draw a base on balls. She was hit, hit by a pitch in her last at bat and flew out, popped up to Tristan Doster in her first at bat. She now on base again, this time via a walk. And it brings up Mackenzie Bump. Bump, the sophomore third baseman. Hit a two RBI triple in her first at bat. Got on to the fielder's choice in her second at bat and looks at a pitch that is down and away, so it's a ball and no strikes. Here's the 1-0 from Brianna Vasquez. Pitch that's fouled into the backstop. By Bump. Nick, uh, Mackenzie Bump with a 345 batting average. Coming into the game. Again, she is one for two. She had that two RBI triple in her first at bat. Part of that three run top of the first inning for Ohio State. Here is the 1-1 one, one. that is just off the plate. Ball two. Two balls and one strike now on third baseman, the sophomore, Mackenzie Bump. Runners at first and second with one out. Here's the pitch, two and one. That's foul back into the backstop. Now a two and two count. On Megan Bump. Here's the pitch from Brianna Vasquez. Pitch that's upstairs. It's three balls and two strikes. Bump hit the first two home runs of her season in the Michigan State Series, and both of them came in the opening game of the series, in which Ohio State took two or three games from the Spartans. Here's the 3-2 for Brianna Vasquez. A swing and a foul down the left field line. By Mackenzie Bump, so she remains alive in this at bat. Bump was one for four in yesterday's game. Hit a single and was stranded at third in her third at bat. Full count now on Mackenzie Bump with one out, runners at first and second. Here's the pitch. Swing and she'll just get around on it and foul it down the first base line. So three balls and two strikes. When the Hawks come to the plate in the bottom of the fifth, Tristan Doster will lead it off. He'll be in the bottom of the fifth inning. Here again the 3-2 from Brianna Vasquez, a pitch that is fouled back behind the backstop over top of the press box here. So a 3 2 account again on Mackenzie Bump. Temperature remains at 47 degrees. Wind out of the west northwest at about 16. The only way it's making it cool, but you can see the flags are really stretching out here this afternoon. Here's a pitch that she'll hit out to center field. And Bradley Klosterman tried to come in and make the play, can't come up with it. She hops to her feet and throws to third to Amber DeSena. Had to go off the front of her glove. They may have had a play. On Tegan Cordelletti, but it gets uh, hits off the end of the glove of Amber DeSena right at third base. And so the error on Brody Klosterman, she had to come in about half a dozen steps. She had reached down and try to make the play. She got her glove on it, actually got into the webbing of her glove, and then it, as she hit the ground, it popped out. So she hops up. 
fires it over to third base where she had a play on Tortoletti. And it just goes off of the front of the glove of Amber DeSena. So now the Ohio State Buckeyes will have the bases loaded for Cami Quartercracks. She steps into the batter's box, the right-handed batter's box, a freshman shortstop, batting 308. One for two on the day. She singled back in the first inning. Hawk defense was conferring in the circle. Head coach Rene Gillespie out there. Now they're back in their spots. Going to get a play at the plate. Just one out. Quarter cracks. Steps into the right-handed batter's box. Brianna Vesquez now. Looking at her arm with the pitch. Here's the wind up in the pitch, and it's called strike one on the inside corner. That infield is playing in. DeSena two strides down from third base and two in from the line. Sophia Morris in at short as a Sammy Diaz at second, and Kalena Burns down the line at first. Here's the 0-1 for Brianna Vasquez, a pitch that is swung on and dribbled to Amber DeSena, and they try to get the play at home. Do they get her out on the force? So they don't get it as the ball dropped out of the glove of Tristan Doster. And so Ohio State will score Tegan Cordelletti from third base. Other runners move up. Nikki Carver to third. McKenzie Bump to second. It was a real close play as Amber DeSena charging down the line at third. Looked to me like she had a play. Pitched it home to Doster. Couldn't handle it. Here is the next batter in line is Megiotti. The senior center fielder 0 for 2 on the day. And a 1-0 count on her. 5-2 the lead now for Ohio State. Top of the fifth inning. Here is the pitch that Adi will get around on and follow back above and beyond the press box. So it's a one-on-one -one count on Meggie Adi. 257 hitter. 28 hits, now 111 at-bats. Eight doubles, a triple. She has four home runs. So she's very capable of hitting the long ball. Here's the 1-1, one, one, a pitch that she hits right back up to the middle to Brianna Vasquez to get the play at the plate and the force. Tristan Dostro quickly wheels and fires one to Kalena Burns at first, thinking they had a chance to get Adi at first, but they do not. But they do get the lead runner for the second out of the inning. Bump moves up to third. Quarter, quarter Cox uh, to Second base, and Megiotti now at first. So bases loaded once again for Taylor Pack. Pack hit a solo home run back in the second inning and a double in her last at-bat. So she two for two in the day. Here's the first pitch to her. That is away. Got a 5-2 game going here, folks. Ohio State with the lead. This game is very similar to what we saw yesterday. In the 7-3 win for Ohio State. Two outs. One ball and no strikes on Taylor Pack. Senior catcher. Here is the 1-0. Now becomes two balls and no strikes. Hawks just need to make an out here to finish this half inning. Not give up any more runs to the Bucks. Here comes the 2-0 from Brianna Vasquez. It's, it's called strike one in the outside corner. So two balls and one strike to the number eight hitter in the lineup, Taylor Pack, senior catcher. Here comes the pitch from Brianna Vasquez, one that she'll lift foul to the left side of the press box and then the softball diamond behind us. Now a two and two count. Here comes the pitch from Brianna Vasquez. And it's one that Pack will reach out, try to get a piece of and doesn't, swings and misses. And the Hawks get out of that one. 
they get out of it. Let's just put it that way. You only give up one run. Bases were loaded when the half inning had ended, but Ohio State inches its lead to five to two and a three run lead as the Hawks will be coming to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth inning. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. Back at Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa. Ohio State inches ahead by 5-2 to two now. Five runs, eight hits, and an error. Iowa with two runs. They scored in the bottom of the second inning. And four hits and two errors on the Hawks here this afternoon. Update you now from Dwight Banks Field. The Iowa Hawkeyes leading Minnesota now 2-1. to one. Game is in the fifth inning. In the bottom of the fifth inning. Hawkeyes have runners at first and second with two out. So coming to the plate for the Hawks, Tristan Doster, the catching fresher, uh, freshman catcher, 0 for 2 on the day. Yesterday, Tristan 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. She comes in, though, with a 306 batting average. Probably going to have dipped now below 300 with her being 0 for 2 for now. A couple of uh, one fly out, a pop-up to catcher, and then she grounded out to third base. Here's the first pitch from Ashley Smith. Allison Smith, again, their leading uh, pitcher with wins last year, has six wins coming into this game. Lexi Hanley, the leading pitcher for Ohio State with a 13, now 14, and 6 record after yesterday's win. Ahead in the count on Tristan Doster, 0-1. Here's a pitch that's outside. Oster had a four-game hitting streak. We had three of those hits in the third game at Maryland, including a two-RBI home run. Her, here's a pitch that she'll foul down the right field line and well out of play. She had singles uh, hits against, had a double against Drake, had a hit against Minnesota, which is an RBI single, two-RBI single, and, and she also had another single in game two against Minnesota. Nothing against game three, and then in the doubleheader of Nebraska, she only played in game one. Here's one that she hits off the end of her bat and right back to Allison Smith in the circle. And that is the first out of the bottom of the fifth inning for the Hawks. Kalena Burns will step to the plate for the Hawkeyes. Kalena Burns singled in her last at bat, and so was stranded at third base back in the third inning. Here's the first pitch tour that dribbles across home plate. Burns batting average come into the game at 264. One for two today. She struck out in her first at bat. So she's 24 of 89. Three doubles, a triple, and three home runs. Here is the 1 0 tour that's down and in. So it's two balls and no strikes. Got a good hit and pitch coming at her in this 2-0 count here. We'll see if Allison Smith will deliver that to her. Make it a hittable pitch. Here's the 2-0 from Smith. And again, down and in. So three balls and no strikes. To the number four hitter in the Hawkeye lineup, first baseman Kalena Burns. Three multi-hit games on the season. Probably the most famous was her two home run game against Minnesota a week ago yesterday. A two run and three run home runs. Here's the 3 0 tour that's down and in. So, in four straight pitches, Kalena Burns will draw a walk and be at first base with one out. Bring up Denali Lecker. Denali on the day is 0 for 1. She walked in her first at bat and scored. On the RBI sacrifice fly, 
Actually, she was pinch run for by Haley Down, and Down would score on the sacrifice fly. Here is the first pitch to Denali, a pitch that's called strike one in the outside corner. One gone in Iowa's bottom of the fifth inning. Kalena Burns at first base, just drawing a walk. And Denali Lecker at the plate with an 0-1 count on her. Here's the pitch from Allison Smith, a pitch that's down and in. Ooh, a called strike two. Got an umpire that's getting a little razzing from the crowd here. Thinking maybe we got a very wide and low strike zone. But an 0-2 count on Denali. Here's the pitch from Allison Smith. And it's one that is up and in on her, so it's one ball and two strikes. Head, uh, assistant coach Rick uh, Dillinger praising Denali for her athleticism. Had a good freshman year, didn't pitch much at all a year ago, but she's kind of combined that with her hitting this year. Here's one that's down and away, so got a two ball and two strike count on her. It's got to be a bit stressful pitching and hitting in the same game. But again, you know, coming out of high school, she was certainly used to that. But it's a different animal here at the Division I level. Here are the 2-2 from Allison Smith to Denali Lecker. Pitch that she'll hit out to left field. Will it drop? It does. Just in front of the left fielder, Melina Wilkinson. She's lucky she dives for it, and fortunately, she was able to scoop it up in her glove. Otherwise, that ball's still rolling out to the wall. But nevertheless, Denali Lecker with her first hit of the day moves Kalena Burns on to second base. And with runners at first and second and one out, Sophia Morris comes to the plate. Iowa trailing 5-2. to two. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Allison Smith in the circle for Ohio State. Here is the pitch that's down and away on Sophia. One ball and one strike. Sophia has walked twice in this game. She scored after the first walk. Part of the two-run bottom of the second inning for the Hawks. Ahead of the count at one ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch from Smith. One that she takes a cut at and fouls it right there in the box. Sophia with two hits in yesterday's game. Didn't have a, have a hit in either of the Nebraska games earlier this week on Tuesday. Had only one hit in the Minnesota series here. Now she'll foul one back down the left field line. So she down on the count at a ball and two strikes. The junior who started the her collegiate career with the junior college approach in a couple of seasons at Des Moines Area Community College. She from Johnston which is a suburb of Des Moines. Here's the one-two from Allison Smith, a pitch that's just off the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Sammy Diaz, a scheduled hitter next. See if Sophia can get something going here. Runners at first and second and just one out. And a two-two count on Sophia, a pitch that is just off the plate. So it's three balls and two strikes. She has seven multi-hit games on the season. She had four of them in a row and five and six games back in the midseason from February 25th North Florida game through the March 4th Memphis game. Here is the 3-2 as pitch is upstairs and back-to-back -back walks issued by Allison Smith. That'll load up the bases for the Hawkeyes here in the bottom of the fifth inning and just one out. And coming to the plate, is Emma Henderson to bat for Sammy Diaz. She being announced now by head coach Renee Gillespie and the home plate umpire. Batting for Sammy Diaz, number 41, Emma Henderson. See if Emma can, can come up with something here. Emma making her 17th appearance. This will be her 26th at bat in the year. She does have four hits, no extra base hits. And the low down on Emma as a hitter. 
Last time she swung the bat, well, she did start against Nebraska. She also was a designated player, so she did have two at-bats in uh, the Nebraska game, a Nebraska game, last this past Tuesday. With no result out of them. Other than that, that would be her 13th at-bat. And here she is at the plate. Here's the first pitch called strike one in the outside corner. So down on the count at no balls and a strike. Here's the pitch as she gets around on and will follow back into the backstop. So it's a one on one count. Freshman she and twin sister Anna from Battleground, Indiana, right outside of West Lafayette, home of the Purdue Bordermakers. Came back to Iowa. Parents are both graduates of Central College in Pella. Here's the 0-2. It's down and away, so it's a ball and two strikes. Big situation here for her, for this Iowa Softball team, Kalena Burns at third, Denali Lecker at second, and Sophia Morris at first. Bases loaded, one out. Here's the one, two, to Emma Henderson. She bounces it right back to uh, Ashley or Allison Smith in the circle who goes right home with it to get the force on, Kaylin, on uh, Kalena Burns. And she didn't try to fire it down to first base to double up. It was a... A one hopping hard shot to Allison Smith, and now Sammy Diaz will re enter and run for herself, will be at first base. Denali moves on to third. Sophia Morris now at second base, so the base is loaded once again for the Hawks. With two outs now, and Amber DeSena comes to the plate. It's popped up to short in her last at bat and singled in her first. At bat, an RBI single. Has teammates on each of the bases in front of her. Here is the first pitch from Allison Smith, the pitch that is outside. Ball one. One ball and no strikes now on the sophomore. Amber DeSena out of Concord, California. Here comes the 1-0 from Allison Smith, pitch that called strike one on the outside corner. Amber trying to be patient and yet hit the right pitches. 200 batting average come into the game. Again, she is one for two, so she's 14 of 67. She does have five doubles and seven runs batted in. Fully capable putting the ball in play. Here's the 1-1 from Allison Smith, pitch that's called strike two. On the inside part of the plate. So she's down on the count at a ball and two strikes to the sophomore, Allison Smith. Ohio State leads 5-2. to two. The Hawks with the bases loaded and two outs. Amber DeSena at the plate. Here's the 1-2 off the plate. Two balls and two strikes. See if she can hit one in the gap. Get those runners moving. Here are the 2-2 from Allison Smith. Pitch that is called strike three on an outside corner. And once again, this is the fourth time the Hawkeyes with the bases loaded, unable to get a run across as Amber DeSena called out on strikes, even though she probably thought the pitch was outside. Got to do the best you can to try to be difficult at the plate. We're through five innings. We head to the top of the sixth, Ohio State five and Iowa two. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM800 KXIC from Learfield. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? Thinking about gas mileage? Keep your engine at its best with clean oil from Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic. Got an older vehicle? Use Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic High Mileage. Right now, you can get five quarts with an STP Extended Life Oil Filter for only $35.99.
Get what you need for better fuel efficiency at any of our 6,000 stores or on AutoZone.com. Restrictions apply. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye Softball on 800 KSIP. Iowa City Tire and Service is a proud supporter of Hawkeye Softball. Find them at 410 Kirkwood Avenue or online at ictire.com. Iowa City Tire, where service actually comes first. Heading into the top of the sixth inning, Ohio State has inched itself further in the lead now at 5-2 to two after scoring one in the top of the fifth inning. Denali Lecker now will be in the circle for the Hawks. She'll be facing Caitlin Farley. Brianna Vasquez went five innings. She gave up five runs. Now it's Denali Lecker's turn in the circle. Denali got in for a couple of innings yesterday. Here is the first pitch to Farley, and it's a strike down and in. Denali, the designated player, now pitching. And ahead in the count at no balls and a strike. Here is the 0-1 that Farley will not chase. Caitlin Farley, a 241 hitter, the freshman second baseman, is 0 for 2 on the day. Actually, was pinch hit for by Caitlin Kaufman, who yesterday pinch hit with a three-run home run. So Farley has struck out once, and Kaufman flew out to Bradley Klosterman in center field. Here's the 1-1 that now becomes one ball and two strikes as she swings and misses. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM 800 KXIC Iowa City. I'm Jerry Koala. We're in the top of the sixth inning here at Bob Pearl Field. Big Ten softball between the Hawks and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State leading 5-2. Here is the 1-2 that's just inside. Farley looked to slap it and then pulled the bat back. Umpire sees it inside, so it's two balls and two strikes. Here's the 2-2 from Denali Lecker. And it's a pitch that swung on by Caitlin Farley, and the Hawks are wheeling it around the, the, the infield as if it was a strikeout, and it's a foul ball. Home plate umpire determined it was a foul ball. Tristan Doster got it into her glove, and now head coach Renee Gillespie is coming out to have a chat with the home plate umpire. Not quite sure that I saw what happened myself, but If it was a foul catch by Doster, I would assume the batter would be out. I'm not sure if the ball was fouled, hit the ground, and into her glove, or if she missed it completely, and Doster dropped it. So the umpires are conferring. Can, can you tell from the picture there? Talking to the University of Iowa. Iowa softball staff here. They got a picture of it. See if it was dropped before it got into her glove. No, I think she had it. Well, they're going to give Farley another shot at it as a foul ball, but that ball was fouled right back into her glove, even though it was right at the top of the of the uh, turf. Here's the 2-2 again from Benali Lecker. This one is a swing and a miss by Farley, and that for sure is a strikeout. So, Denali Lecker comes on and gets the first batter in the top of the sixth inning to strike out. That's Caitlin Farley, and now we go to the top of the order in Melina Willix, uh, Wilkeson. Wilkeson, 353 average coming into the game. She is 0 for 3 today. She had two singles yesterday, 2 for 4. Here's one that she'll bunt just down the third base line. It'll go foul and picked up there by Tristan Doster. Just watching it roll slowly foul over that third base line. Very close, and so it's strike one on Melina Wilkinson. Here comes the 0-1 from Denali Lecker in the circle now for Brianna Vasquez, a pitch that's up and in, so it's one ball and one strike.
Melina Wilkes, uh, Wilkeson, a freshman left fielder, leading off for this Ohio State softball team. Here's the 1-1 one -one that she check swings it foul right in front of the Ohio State dugout. So she's down on the count at a ball and two strikes. Tomorrow's game scheduled for noon, and at this time it is will go on as scheduled at noon. It will be just a YouTube channel streaming game only. And here's the 1-2 and an off-speed pitch that hits the outside corner. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Denali Lecker here in the top of the, of the sixth inning. Two outs brings up J.C. Ruberti. Ruberti singled and scored back in the first inning. First of three runs scored. And she got on base on an error in her second at bat. Stranded was forced at second. And she grounded out to Sammy Diaz in her third at bat. So she won for three on the day. Fouls the first pitch from Denali Lecker back on the left field line. And she's down on the count at no balls and one strike. When we come to the bottom of the sixth inning, it'll be the number nine hitter, Riley Sheehy, for the Hawkeyes when they come to the plate in the bottom of the sixth. Here's one that's hit out to right field to Nia Carter in a line drive. Nia had to watch that ball just waving back and forth, zigzagging. And she came in on a couple of steps and caught it on the line drive. So three up and three down for Ohio State in the top of the sixth inning. We head into the bottom of the sixth. It's Ohio State leading the, uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes by the score of 5-2. to two. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. offer to buy or trade your car just enter your vin or license plate answer a few questions about your car's history and what kind of condition it's in in minutes you'll receive an offer to sell or trade your car that you can be sure is fair then choose a dealer to purchase your car and schedule a time to meet for all of the it's kbb.com you're listening to university of iowa hawkeye softball on 800 kx University of Iowa Sports Medicine delivers comprehensive care for competitive and recreational athletes of all ages. Our team of orthopedic surgeons, physicians, and specialists are committed to reducing pain and injury through our advanced training and experience. Same day, next day appointments available, no referral needed. Learn more by visiting uihc.org backslash sports medicine. And we certainly thank the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics for sponsoring today's softball game on the field. Uh, Matt uh, Boulier, whom I uh, interviewed yesterday and played it back earlier today or at the beginning of this broadcast, was here uh, being recognized and the broad, uh, sponsoring this radio broadcast as well. University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinic, superb in their field all across the globe. We head into the... Bottom of the sixth inning, Riley Sheehy at the plate and looks at a pitch that's up and away from her. So one ball and no strikes. Riley sacrificed fly in her first at bat, scoring Haley down back in the second inning, and she doubled in her second. Here's a pitch that she gets around on and hits it foul on the left field line. Out of Newtown, Pennsylvania, Newtown, located just west of Trenton, New Jersey, northeast of Philadelphia, about an hour. She has an interesting path to the University of Iowa, went to the University of South Carolina upstate back in her first year of 2019, and then she transferred to the University of Iowa. Here is one she checks swings, and it's called strike two by the home plate umpire. One ball and two strikes now on the senior outfielder, Riley Sheehy. Has hit safely in six of her last eight games. Here is the one-two that she hits out to left field, right at the left fielder, Melina Wilkeson. And that's a quick out here for the Hawks. Nice drive there by Riley Sheehy, who hit a home run yesterday, her first of her career. A solo home run followed by Riley Klosterman's solo home run. In the bottom of the sixth inning yesterday, make it a 5-2 game. Ohio State would go on to win it 7-2. Riley Klosterman now at the plate for the Hawks. Riley struck out in their last at-bat. She's walked and singled in the game here. 
One out, she looks at a pitch that's down and away. Allison Smith has gone the distance for Ohio State. In her sophomore year, she has but two complete games. Last year, she had 10 complete games. Here's one that Briley will hit past quarter cracks at shortstop to her left and be on base here for the third time today and her second single. And it makes up Nia Carter, a one-out single by Briley Klosterman. Gets her at first base and brings up Nia. Nia got on the fielder's choice in her last at-bat. 0 for 3 on the day. Had two hits in yesterday's game. Has teammate Brody Klosterman in front of her. Here's the first pitch from Allison Smith. And it's ball up and away. Play into the favor of Nia Carter. That means that pitch is going to have to come closer to the plate. Nia real sharp with that bat. Had 13 multi-hit games a year ago. One three-hit game. The others were two hit games. Here's one that she tries to lay down a bunt and it goes foul. So she'll hustle back to the left-handed batter's box with a one and one count on her. Earlier this season, she had a five hit game against Houston University. She was five for five. That tied a Hawkeye record for hits in a game. Three other Hawkeyes have accomplished the same thing. 1-1 one, one count. Here's the pitch from Allison Smith, one that is away. So it's two balls and one strike. 16 multi-hit games for Nia on the season, including that five-hit game. She also has had one three-hit game and 13 two-hit games. Here's the 2-1 from Allison Smith. And it's a pitch that she bunts and gets it up into the air, lifts it foul back into the backstop. So she's got a two and two count on her. Doesn't make her any less likely to lay down a bunt. We'll see what head coach Renee Gillespie has her doing with Bridie Klosterman at first base and just one out. Hawks are trailing by three. It's the bottom of the sixth inning. It's five to two Ohio State. Here's the two two from Smith out to left field, but right at Wilkinson. Number two. That's two this inning that she's had two line drives hit right at her. And she's made both plays, and there's two gone in Iowa's bottom of the sixth inning. Tristan Doster will step up to the batter's box. The freshman catcher, 0 for 3 on the day. 0 for 2 in yesterday's game. 0 for 2 in the one game she played against Nebraska earlier this week. She hasn't... Had a hit since the second game of the Minnesota series, which was a week ago today. And the freshman coming into the game today. Batting 306. She now 22 of 75. And it looks as if we're going to get a pinch hitter for her. And it'll be Anna Henderson will come in and pinch hit for Tristan Doster here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Anna looking at Allison Smith. Here comes the first pitch. It's one that's up and away. So it's ball one. Roddy Klosterman at first base. Anna Henderson making her 10th appearance at the plate. Has one hit on the season and one RBI. Here is the 1-0 tour. That's called strike one. One ball and one strike on the freshman out of Battleground, Indiana. We've seen Emma in this game. She pinch hit for Sammy in the last at bat for the Hawks. Here comes the 1-1 one -one from Allison Smith to Anna. Anna takes a good solid cut at one and misses it. She's down on the count of the ball and two strikes. Here's the one two from Allison Smith. And it's a pitch that's down and away, so it's two balls and two strikes. On the freshman, Anna Henderson. Hawks trailing five to two. Have the bases loaded in their last at bat, unable to get a run across. 
had one of them third base runners forced at home on a ground ball. So there was an opportunity. And then at the end, it was a strikeout by Amber DeSena in that last half inning. So the Hawks with a runner at first in Bradley Klosterman, two gone. Anna Henderson at the plate, batting in the number three spot in the lineup for Tristan Doster, another freshman. Here's the 2-2 from the sophomore Allison Smith. A swing and a miss by Anna Henderson. And that will end the Hawks here at the bottom of the sixth inning. Get a runner on, can't move her around. We head into the top of the seventh inning and Ohio State leads the Iowa Hawkeyes by the score of 5-2. to two. This is Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM800 KXIC from Learfield. We grow corn, a lot of corn. We love seeing our farmers in the fields, and although they're perfect strangers, we know them. We know them by their equipment covered in dust. We know them by their work ethic where days off don't exist. We know them by the way they wave, passing strangers alike on a two-lane road. We know them in the midst of our kitchen as we prepare another family meal. In Iowa, we grow corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. The Iowa corn farmers are proud to be on the sidelines for the Iowa Hawkeyes. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye Softball on 800 KXIC. Home of the Hawkeyes, Finkbine Golf Course and Bumps Restaurant is open for the 2022 golf season. Featuring 18 holes of challenging public golf at Finkbine Golf Course as well as handcrafted American Fair. Stop by today to enjoy quality golf at Finkbine Golf Course and delicious food at Bumps Restaurant. And in driving by the golf course today, coming to the softball diamond, you can see that the uh, the course is certainly filled up with golfers as the Hawkeye Invitational going on today and tomorrow. It had to have been awful chilly this morning when they got started at 7.30 at 27 degrees. It looked, even looked a little more chilly when I was driving by at, uh, at 1 o'clock, quarter to 1 to get there, but excellent golf course as it is, very popular among many, many golfers across the state of Iowa, Finkbine Golf Course. So we head into the top of the seventh inning, and it's Sam Hackenbrack at the plate. Here is the first pitch tour from Denali Lecker, and it's called strike one. Hackenbrack singled and scored in her last at bat. To make it 5-2, to two. that was back in the top of the fifth inning. Down on the counter, no balls and a strike. Here's the pitch from Denali Lecker, one that's down the left field, or third baseline, and foul is to the left of Amber DeSena. So no balls and two strikes on the junior designated player. She scored twice here today. She has a couple of singles. She's two for three. Here's the 0-2, a pitch that's down and away. One ball and two strikes. Hackenbrack, 370 uh, average coming into the game now with 39 hits and 103 at bats. Eight doubles, no triples, but she has 11 home runs. All of those home runs have come in the last 21 games. Here's one that she'll foul back on the right field line and out of play. So here's the one-two from Denali Lecker. Sam Hackenbrack, one that she'll just dribble down third base line on the move on the run to scoop and throw is Amber to center. That ball was just riding parallel along the third base line, was not going to go foul. Amber got it about halfway down the third base line, and without hesitation, a nice throw across the diamond to Kalena Burns to get Hackenbrack for the first out of this top of the seventh. It brings up Nikki Carver. Carver walked in her last at bat, was hit by a pitch in her second at bat, and popped up to Tristan Doster at the plate in her first at bat. So she 0 for 1 on the day. Here is the first pitch to her that's down and in. Denali Lecker has come in for the Hawks. She did so in the uh, uh, top of the sixth inning and got Ohio State three up and three down with a couple of strikeouts inside of that pitching performance. Ahead, uh, behind on the count now, one ball and no strikes. An off-speed pitch that's down and in. Carver batting 326 coming into the game. Again, 0 for 1 today. Hit a two-run home run yesterday to extend Ohio State's lead to 7-2 to in the top of the seventh inning. 
Here is the 2-0 from Denali Lecker, a pitch that's away. So it's three balls and no strikes. To Nikki Carver. Had a couple of home runs in the Toledo game Wednesday night, in which they won 5-4. to four. Had four runs batted in. Here is the 3-0. That is now ball four. So a one-out walk issued to Nikki Carver to bring up McKenzie Bump. Number one, third baseman. Bump got on first on her last at bat on the error on Bradley Klosterman in center field. Got on in the fielder's choice and was forced at second in her second at bat and hit a two RBI triple back in the first inning. They got Ohio State going in the three to nothing lead. Here's the first pitch from Denali Lecker, one that is down and in. One ball and no strikes. Bump a 345 hitter coming in. Second on the team in batting. 20 hits, 58 at-bats. 21 hits now and 61 at-bats. Here is the 1-0 pitch that she'll rifle right past Kalena Burns out into right field, and it kicks off with the glove and left ankle of Nia Carter, and it allows the runners to move. Nikki uh, Carver gets to third now. Number 27, Carter. And McKenzie Bump at second. She singled. And the ball bounced off of Nia Carter in right field and allowed them to go to second and third with one out. No force play involved now on a ground ball to the infield. So the Hawks will have to play the play at the plate. Infield now has creeped in. And the third base coach for Ohio State now, she's going to have a runner for Nikki Carver. And again, the numbers are so light. So it's Mariah Rodriguez going to run for Nikki Carver. Nikki Carver was at third base. So here in the top of the seventh inning, Mariah Rodriguez making her 20th appearance. She has scored four runs. So you got third base running for Nikki Carver. And at the plate, <clears throat> Cami Quartercracks, the freshman shortstop, who's one for three on the day. Here's one that she lifts out to left field, pushes Riley Sheehy back. They're going to have a throw to third, no play at the plate, and that will score Rodriguez from third on the sacrifice fly. Really the only play that... Riley had, she was too deep really to try to get something thrown home. And so now becomes an insurance run for Ohio State at 6-2 to two in the top of the seventh inning. Two outs, and it brings up Meggie Adi. Adi 0 for 3 on the day. And a teammate at second base in McKenzie Bump. Here's the first pitch, she'll just dribble it down the line to. Kalena Burns at first, she picks it, steps on first base. And that'll end Ohio State's top of the seventh inning. But they get an extra run, and they lead the Hawks 62 as we head into the bottom of the seventh inning. When the Hawks come to the plate, it'll be Kalena Burns, Denali Lecker, and Sophia Morris when play resumes. It's Ohio State 6 and Iowa 2. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM 800 KXIC from Learfield. Well, the Hawks are going to have to come up with four runs to tie, push it into extra innings, and five to win here in the bottom of the seventh inning. They've been fairly patient at the plate so far. This game had uh, the bases loaded in the uh, bottom of the fifth inning, unable to push across a run. They've had runners uh, also on base without scoring in the third inning. 
fourth inning and the sixth inning again at least one runner on but that uh, fifth inning when they had the bases loaded and chances to get some runs across they just were unable to get it done Kalena Burns will step to the plate for the Hawks trailing six to two Ohio State with six runs on nine hits and an error. Iowa two runs on six hits and three errors in the game here today. Kalenna batting average coming into the game at 264. She walked at her last at bat, stranded at third, singled in her second at bat, and struck out to begin her at bats of this game. She's one for two, and she's down on the count now with no balls and a strike. Allison Smith has gone the distance for Ohio State, much like Lexi Handley did yesterday. The lanky left-hander in that 7-3 win. Here is the one. Well, excuse me, that was a strike, I guess the umpire called. So now it's one ball and one strike. I thought it was the first pitch was down and away. So one and one on the junior, first baseman. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Kalena. And it's down and in on her, so it's two balls and one strike. She out of Corona, California, in the Bay Area of San Francisco, east of San Fran, next to Pleasant Hill suburb, if you're familiar with the region of San Francisco. Here's the 2-1 pitch from Allison Smith to Kalena Burns. Pitch that's down and in, so it's three balls and one strike. Hawks need base runners to get a chance to get runs across the plate. And with a three and one count, Kalina Burns will look for a pitch to hit. We'll see if she has the green light. Here's the three one that's down and in. Ball four. So Kalina Burns has drawn her second consecutive walk of the game. And it brings up Denali Lecker. Lecker singled in her last at bat. She has flown out to second base and walked and scored back in the second. So Denali is 0 for 2 on the day. Excuse me, 1 for 2 on the day. And a pinch runner comes in. Riley Moss will come in for Kalena Burns. Riley, the freshman out of Muscatine. Riley out of Muscatine, as I'd mentioned, has pinch run quite often this, this season as a freshman, uh, making her 26th game played. Here's the first pitch to Denali Lecker, one that she rips down the third baseline, left field line, and foul. She got up to that first pitch. Moss has scored eight runs on the season. She does have seven at bats. She has started, uh, started two games for the Hawks this year. Her last appearance, she started the left field in uh, the Nebraska, one of the Nebraska games. Here's the 0-1 that now becomes 0-2. That was a beautiful off-speed pitch by Allison Smith that froze Denali Lecker at the plate. In that Nebraska game, uh, Riley was 0-2 for 2 in that game, and that started in left field. That was game two. Down on the count is Denali Lecker. No balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch that is outside. One and two on the sophomore. Designated player, now pitcher. Denali Lecker out of Ogden. Here's the one, two from Allison Smith. Pitch again is outside. She doesn't chase in two balls and two strikes. Kalena Burns started things off here in this at-bat for the Hawks with a walk. She now being pinch run for by Riley Moss. Nobody out in Iowa's bottom of the seventh inning. Hawks need four to tie, five to win it. Denali hit a solo home run yesterday. One for three in the day. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. It's an off-speed pitch that she lifts foul on the first base side and into the bleachers. And she remains at this at bat with a, a, a two and two count on her.
Denali on the season with five multi-hit games. Has a three-hit game. That coming at Kansas back on the 13th of March. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch that's down. It bounces across the plate, actually. So it's a full count. On to Nally Lecker. She had an 0-2 count on her. She's worked it to a full count. She has a teammate in Roddy Moss, a freshman from Muscatine at first base. Hawks trailing 6-2. Need to make something happen right here. Here's the 3-2 from Smith. Bounces across the plate. And back-to-back -back walks issued by Allison Smith. See how far... Head coach Kelly Kovac, Shanley, will carry with Lexi, or with Allison Smith. And as I talk about it, looks like Lexi Hanley coming out of the dugout. The lanky left-hander who pitched seven innings yesterday. And so Ohio State's going to make a pitching change, friends. And we'll talk to you about who that is when we return. It's Ohio State 6, Iowa 2. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM800, KXIC, and Learfield. Heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com slash TV to learn more. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye Softball on 800 KXIC. And the new pitcher for Ohio State is Emily Ruck. Emily Ruck is a sophomore from Westerville, Ohio, making her 13th appearance. She's pitched 42 and two-thirds innings, giving up 33 hits, 20 runs, 17 of them earned, has a 2.79 ERA. She's uh, walked 19 batters, struck out 52, and is facing Sophia Morris with runners at first and second and nobody out for the Hawks, and Sophia looks at the first, uh, first pitch strike. Sophia with three walks of her own on the day today. She has scored a run that back in the second inning. Down on the count at no balls and one strike. Here is the pitch that she lifts out into right center field. And on the move around third base, it's Riley Moss. She's going to score. And on to third goes Denali Lecker. Sophia Morris got a great pitch to hit out on the right field gap. And she gets a run in in Riley Moss from second base. Denali Lecker moves on to third. And it brings up Sammy Diaz. First hit of the day for Sofia Mares. Again, she walked three times, and now she finally gets a base hit. Six to three, the game. Nobody out. Runners at the corners for the Hawks, and Sammy Diaz at the plate. Sammy 0 for 3 on the day. Has struck out, flown out, and hit into a fielder's choice in her last at bat. Looking at Emily Ruck, here's a pitch that's down and in. And Ruck, like the other two, at five foot nine listed. So they have some tall, lanky pitchers. Lexi Hanley at six foot one pitched yesterday. Just gives them that leverage of length. Sammy up in the count of the ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch from Ruck, a pitch that is called strike one on the outside corner. Sammy with a 196 batting average coming into the game, but 0 for 3 on the day. Has teammates at first and third. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Ruck. One that she hits out into center field. It's going to push Adi back. She tries to get up underneath it. It's going to score a run from third base, and the sacrifice fly gives the Hawks their second run of the afternoon, uh, of this inning, excuse me, makes it a 6-4 game. And only one out. Amber DeSena to the plate. Sophia... Morris had to uh, remain at first base. As the catch out in center field, the throw was into second base, but it does score. 
Denali Lecker from uh, third. And it brings up Amber DeSena. Marissa Peak now will come in and bat for Amber DeSena. Marissa got a pinch hitting roll yesterday. And she now has a teammate at first base. Now a six to four game. Bottom of the seventh inning and just one out. Emily Ruck, the pitcher of uh, record for Ohio State, gets a first pitch strike on Marissa Peak. Peak came in and pinch hit in the bottom of the fifth inning for Tristan Doster yesterday. She's down on the count at no balls and one strike. Here's a pitch that's outside, so it's one ball and one strike. Riley Sheehy scheduled to bat next. The number nine hitter in the lineup. One ball, one strike, one out, one runner on, and Sophia Morris at first base. Here's the 1-1 one, one that Marissa got a good cut at, and maybe a little bit out in front of it. Off-speed pitch by Emily Ruck. And Marissa down on the count of the ball and two strikes. Here is the 1-2 from Emily Ruck. And it's a pitch that Marissa will pop up into the infield. Will it drift foul? It does. Gets into the stands. So the count remains the same at a ball and two strikes. Marissa did come on yesterday and not only pinch hit for Tristan Doster, but stayed in to play catcher. She did have two official at-bats yesterday with one strikeout. Played in game two, started uh, behind the plate in game two of the Nebraska doubleheader Tuesday and was one for two in the game. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Emily Ruck. Pitch that's well outside. Pack does a nice job to reach out there and snag it before it goes to the backstop and allows Sophia Morris to advance to second. So it evens the count at two balls and two strikes. On the sophomore from Wentzville, Missouri. About an hour north and west of St. Louis. Here is the 2-2 two -two that's upstairs. Three balls and two strikes. On Marissa Peak. Started 36 of 38 games played last year. 24 hits and 107 at-bats. Seven doubles, three home runs. And a full count on her right here, three and two pitch. Here it comes, and here's one she'll foul back into the backstop. Marissa into this at bat, 20 hits and 72 at bats, four doubles. She does have a couple of home runs, so she can get the right pitch and drive it. One swing of the bat will tie this ball game. Count remains the same at three balls and two strikes and one out. Sophia Morris at first base. Marissa Peak at the plate. Here's the pitch from Ruck. One that she swings at and can't connect with and strikes out. That's the second out of the Hawkeyes here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Riley Sheehy comes to the plate. To bat against Emily Ruck. Riley on the day. She flew out to left field in a line drive in her last at bat. Doubled back in the fourth inning. Stranded at second base and had a sacrifice uh, RBI back in the Inning number two, hit her the first home run of her career yesterday, a solo home run. Just looking to drive it here in this at, at bat. Here's a drive, a line drive right at the shortstop. Quarter cracks, and that will end the Hawks at the bottom of the seventh and end this game. But Iowa fights, gets two runs, make it a six to four game. But that ends it here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ohio State has won the first two games of the three-game series. We'll get a chance to speak with head coach Renee Gillespie shortly after she addresses uh, the team, and we'll just hold it here until we get a chance to. Glad you were uh, able to tune in to KXIC this afternoon for this Iowa Hawkeye softball game. Unfortunately, the Hawks uh, will not win this one again. They lost yesterday 7-3 and, and lose today at 6-4.
But back with our post game coming up. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball from AM800 KXIC from Learfield. Well, the end of the game, uh, sour one for the Hawks here again today, but they did fight hard in the bottom of the seventh inning. They got a couple of runners uh, runs in, made it a 6-4 to four game, but just couldn't complete uh, the at-bat to either tie, send in extra innings, or win it in the bottom of the seventh inning. 6-4 to four the win for Ohio State. They won yesterday's game by the score of 7-3. to three. Tomorrow's game will not be on AM800 KXIC. It will just be on the YouTube channel, Iowa Hawkeye Sports Network YouTube channel and streaming. So that'll be a little bit before the hour of noon tomorrow on Easter Sunday. Hopefully uh, you're all having a terrific uh, Easter holiday heading into tomorrow's Easter uh, Sunday dinner and family gatherings and, and what, we, what it represents. Uh, I'll be back with uh, more of our post game coming up and head coach Renee Gillespie when time allows. You're listening to Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM800 KXIC from Learfield. where their customers become friends because they treat you like family. Find them at 410 Kirkwood Avenue or online at ictire.com. Proud sponsors of Hawkeye Softball. There's a sense of pride that comes from the life of a farmer. How many people can say they have a famous tan named after them or be known for their way when they drive past neighbors and strangers alike on a two-lane road? Whether it's a farmer's tan or a farmer's wave, we are proud to be known for a lot of things. We feel that pride every night at the dinner table, knowing we feed our family and yours. Iowa corn is proud to be on the sidelines cheering on the Iowa Hawkeyes. In Iowa, we grow corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. What's done more to improve overall health and wellness, modern medicine, or personal hygiene? Actually, it's both. But considering that bathing went mainstream in the 1800s and brushing your teeth in the 1900s, isn't it time for something new, like cleaning your nose? After all, your nose is the body's air filter for trapping dirt and germs, the first line of defense against allergens, bacteria, and viruses from getting into your lungs. But how do you clean your nose? With Navage. Navage isn't medicine, it's more like plumbing. Navage uses powered suction to pull saline in one nostril to the very back of the nose where germs can get trapped and multiply, and then out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and microbes so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. Join over 2 million others and find out for yourself how refreshing and easy to use Navage is. At Navage.com, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Bed Bath, and Target. Navage. Clean nose, healthy life. You're listening to University of Iowa Hawkeye Softball on 800 KXIC. Welcome back to Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa in Iowa City as game two has just concluded. And it was the Ohio State Buckeyes prevailing over the Hawks uh, again today. Uh, they just chipped away at it uh, from, the, from the very beginning uh, for Ohio State. They would get three in the first inning to take a three to nothing lead. And then they would add a run in the top of the second inning, make it 4 to nothing. And then Iowa would come back with runs in the bottom of their second inning. It started off with a walk by a Denali Lecker, a walk to Sophia Morris, an RBI single by Amber DeSena, then a sacrifice fly by Riley Sheehy uh, would score Haley down and uh, Sophia Morris and to make it a 4-2 to two game. But Ohio State would come back, get one in the top of the fifth inning, Make it a 5-2 to two game, and they made it 6-2 uh, to two with one in the top of the seventh inning. But Iowa fighting hard, coming back in that bottom of the seventh inning, putting runners on. They got a, a walk to Kalena Burns. They got a walk to uh, Denali Lecker. Roddy Moss would come in and run for Kalena Burns. 
And then an RBI single by Sophia Morris would score uh, Riley Moss. It moved uh, Denali Lecker onto third. She would eventually score on a sacrifice fly uh, by Sammy Diaz for only the first out of the game. And then a strikeout and then a flyout uh, would end this softball game. Hawks are fighting hard, though, and they are unfortunately going to fall to 1-12 and in the Big Ten and 18-22 and overall. And Ohio State goes to 25-10 and overall and 6-5 and in the Big Ten. Winning pitcher today uh, is uh, Allison Smith. She went six innings, gave up six hits, four runs, three of them earned. She walked eight batters on the day, struck out five, and 154 Pitches. Emily Ruck would come in and finish the uh, game off, get the save. One inning pitch, the one hit. She did strike out one batter. The losing pitcher today for the Hawks is Brianna Vasquez. She went five innings, gave up eight hits, five runs. Four of them were earned. She walked one batter, struck out three, facing 26 batters and throwing 99 pitches. Then Allie Lecker would come in and finish uh, the last uh, two innings of the game in the circle. She uh, allowed only one hit and one run. It was not earned. She walked one, struck out two while facing eight batters and throwing 28 pitches. Nice attendance here today. There were 600 uh, people in the stands, and there were some from Ohio State that uh, has followed the team here. They have uh, daughters, granddaughters, nieces that are playing in this uh, for this Ohio State softball team, and, and so there was a nice crowd here today, and even on a very chilly day when it's still like 46 degrees, and that wind blowing at 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles per hour, but nevertheless, uh, a win is uh, a win, and a loss is a loss. And Hawks have lost twice now to Ohio State, and that losing streak will continue for uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes now. So Iowa now with seven losses in a row after uh, beating Drake and winning uh, the first game of the Minnesota series by nine to eight. And they had nine losses in front of that. So. You know, it's uh, hard to look past uh, the many losses that this Iowa Hawkeye team is is accruing, uh, but they're fighting hard. They're very young. They're learning how to play at this level uh, as much as they are. And, you know, head coach Renee Gillespie, and we talked to Rick Dillinger at the beginning of this game uh, with, um, you know, about that, uh, the, the youthism. You, you know, you, it's they're beyond halfway of the season, and, you know, you just uh, using uh, that as a reason, still very valid, but, uh, you know, got to come to a point where, you got to move forward, and everybody becomes, a, you know, more of a veteran. But I think in the off season is really where this Iowa Hawkeye softball team will know that they must improve all the way around at every position because they do have talent at each of each of those positions. Whether it's uh, pitching uh, at first base in the outfield, uh, they, they all have plenty of talent, and just a few seniors uh, that will they will be uh, saying goodbye to at the end of this year. But there's a lot of softball to be played. Game three of the series tomorrow. That'll be a noon game. Uh, that'll be uh, only on the Iowa Hawkeye Sports Network YouTube channel and a streaming service. So I'll have that broadcast for you tomorrow at a little bit before the hour of noon. It was 6-4 to four, Ohio State defeating the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Stay tuned for more Iowa Hawkeye softball on AM800, KXIC, and Learfield. And I will never forget meeting Alyssa, who suffered from hyperacusis. Alyssa virtually lived in her dark bedroom, and when I spoke with her, I had to do so in a gentle whisper. What is hyperacusis? Well, imagine being at a movie where the soundtrack is turned way, way up. After five minutes, you just have to leave holding your ears. 
things like turning newspaper pages, running water, your child placing dishes on the table, all are intolerable to someone like Alyssa. Hyperacusis is a strange condition, but even people who suffer from serious migraines experience it. Now, you may not know someone like Alyssa, but her story underscores that all of us are being constantly bombarded with noise. So friends, take the earplugs out and turn down the volume. And when you have a chance, visit disabilitycampaign.org to learn more about hyperacusis and other disabilities. We'll now wrap up this broadcast on 800 KXIC with the play-by-play -play voice of the Iowa Hawkeye softball team, Jerry Kowalik. Thank you very much, uh, Eric. And welcome back to uh, Bob Pearl Field on the campus of the University of Iowa in Iowa City. As we do wrap up this this uh, broadcast here on AM 800 KXIC and uh, a 6-4 to four loss for the University of Iowa and head coach Renee Gillespie standing by coach. And again, uh, the Hawks uh, fighting hard down the end, just kind of ran out of time. Yeah, it, it's, it seems to be, um, you know, we're we still giving up a lot of extra bases, extra opportunities for the for the teams we're facing and um, cleaning that up a little bit on defense. Um, but they came in. I mean, we had some some great sack situations. Um, Diaz with the, the sack fly to bring a kid in. And Sophie, you know, she did a great job of being able to walk four times and come up with a big hit for an RBI. Yeah, so we're seeing some good things. Um, Klosterman did a nice job today at the plate. Um, but we just kind of put it together. You know, we, we give ourselves opportunities, bases loaded again, opportunities, and we're just coming up that clutch, clutch hit. Yeah, uh, Brianna Vasquez again in the circle did a nice job. I really like that off-speed pitch. She really knows how to freeze that batter at the plate. Yeah, they both did such a wonderful job today with that tag team. You know, Bree came in, and um, that pitch was really working well for her. Everything looked good today on her. Um, and then Denali being able to help us close. Um, that, that tag team was good. So we're looking forward to another game tomorrow and um, putting it all together. You know, the interesting thing as well, uh, Coach, is that you're, you're giving these players a, a, a chance to come in and, and perform, even if it's a single pinch hit at bat or a, or a pinch run. I mean, you're putting them in there to perform. Right, right. And that's what we're looking for is that someone that, that's going to spark it is, is going to come up and, and get that hit for us. And um, we didn't see that today. You know, our pinch hitters that came in, um, we didn't get that done. So we'll just look again tomorrow and start working hard on, on doing the little things right. Yeah, the uh, a nice, uh, a pretty nice crowd here on hand, uh, considering you know the the cool temperatures and the wind chill, you know that that it was to sit out here for a couple hours and watch this. You know, so Hawk fans just love their Iowa softball. Oh, and we love our Hawk fans. I mean, they they do such a great job coming out and, and cheering on us, and that's what fires us up. You know, hearing them in the stands, the kids get excited about it. And then look at this. I mean, this is fantastic to watch this right now. We've got all these kids out here playing catch on the field, and and we love them to be be able to come out here and enjoy Pearl Field. Okay, so tomorrow uh, is still the, uh, a noon game uh, as it's as it's scheduled. Yep, it's noon game. Um, we're looking probably uh, 33 feel like um, tomorrow, so um, dress warm. Dress come warmly. Layers, yeah, as they say. Come on happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Head Coach Renee. We'll see you tomorrow. Head Coach Renee Gillespie with the University of Iowa Hawkeye softball the program. The Hawks fall to Ohio State again today by the score of 6-4. to four. Hopefully you've enjoyed the broadcast here on AM800 KXIC. I'm Jerry Koala. Tomorrow, uh, we'll be uh, uh, talking to you a little bit before the hour of noon for game number three of this three-game series between the Iowa Hawks and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Have yourselves a great rest of a Saturday night. Again, a very happy Easter to you all uh, for you, and thank you for listening to AM800 KXIC this afternoon. Ohio State 6 and Iowa 4. You've been listening to Iowa Hawkeye Softball on AM800 KXIC from Learfield. Now join Fox Sports Radio already in progress on 800.